Hey, everybody. Welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. It is episode 44 of the Halls of Art and Vool Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Gavin Norman, otherwise known as Necrotic Gnome. We have a full house once again today, folks. Sorry for the absence last week, but we are ready to rock. I am John. I am the referee for the evening. And going around the horn, we have... Hi, I am Mike. I play Gorin, the fifth level dwarf. I'm David. I play Onweir, the illusionist, fourth level. I am Matt. I am Avaricios, the left hand of Lysion, Uh normally a level six cleric, but at the moment I'm level eight. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ted. I'm playing the temporarily level seven goblin, Mortis J. Gobliano, and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Ted is that, dating That's right, actually. I'm actually seventh level as well. I think all of us are, right? Except yes, all, all of you guys are temporarily up to levels after having uh, taking a Ooh, sip ah. from a fountain that seemed to be dedicated to Marius Tricotor after speaking an oath in his name, which has given you increased power. So with that in mind, why don't we, because everyone is temporarily, you don't know for how long, raised two levels. <clears throat> Uh, our spellcasters all have the ability to cast additional spells. So let's just go quickly through Onweir, Avaricios, and Lisbeth, what their full panoply of spell choices now are that they can cast. Go for it. I have um, added two third level spells, uh, Rope Trick and Detect Illusion. Uh, and that is uh, all the new ones. Do you want me to go through my entire spell list? Yeah, Sorry. that's what you have memorized. Okay, yeah. Uh, second level, I have Mirror Image, Improved Phantasmal Force. And first level, I have Read Magic twice. Right on. Uh, yeah. Cool. Lovely. Um, all right, so uh, Avaricious, yeah, when he got those extra two levels, he got all kinds <clears throat> of stuff. So uh, level one, he had uh, already two <laughs> Cure Light Wounds prepared, but he got to he uh, rolled to see kind of uh, uh, which new level one spell he got, and he got Remove Fear. Uh, level two spells he had already uh, loaded up, Bless and Silence with the 15-foot radius. And the extra levels gave him another level two spell, Snake Charm. Uh, for level three, he had Continual Light. He's already cast that, so that's not available. Um, but I rolled and he got Cure Disease. So you guys, you know, have a great time. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, level four... Uh, spells he had create water already uh memorized but he added in neutralized poison so again guys just like let loose oh, no. <laughs> you are covered it, oh, good. um and i uh uh at level eight he actually gets a level five spell this is only temporary which is fine with me because he got the only spell that absolutely cannot be used underground which <laughs> is insect plague sweet Dude, All right. um, your spell list sounds like it would have been a perfect thing for poor Atticus. Right? Yeah. I could have... and, and saved him from death. No yeah. problem, because it, it pairs nicely with the extra spells that Elizabeth got. So she already had animal friendship and invisibility to animals uh, memorized. Uh, but when she bumped up, she got two level two spells. Um, slow poison, which also would have helped Atticus. And uh, bark skin, which will make her just a little uh, tougher if she needs to be. Sweet. Good stuff. Nice. John, can I actually ask a clarification, which we may not be able to answer right now? It only now occurs to me as I'm looking at the illusionist spell list mm -hmm. that the third level illusion spell is dispel illusion, not detect illusion. But I have detect illusion as noted. And I don't know if that is an error on our part or something that I got from Arden Vool that is not normally included in that list. You're saying Sorry. this is one of the ones that you just learned? <clears throat> Detect Illusion is a first level illusionist spell. Yeah. But I had it listed as a third level, and I'm just clarifying as one of the new ones I'd learned, and I'm clarifying that that is not a. Uh, uh, a uh, My brain, sorry, a, a typo on our part, because Dispel Illusion is third level. Does that well, make what, sense? What did you gain? You're, you are fourth, and now you're sixth. So you gained. Yeah. You gained uh, one extra. You gained two, two third level two spells. Third level spots. Yeah, so you, you yeah. gained, you gained detect and we rolled illusion. for them. You gained Detect Illusion. That's what it was. But Detect Illusion is not a third uh, level I'm, spell. Yeah, sorry, not Detect. Uh, dispel. 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 Is a third okay, level. okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, well, we're just discussing. I'm going to go tuck that kid in. I'll be right back, but please go right ahead. I'll catch okay. up. 
All right, so uh, starting back up again, it is the first of Jelenios, first of the month. It is seven fifty p.m., almost eight p.m. Okay, you are uh, temporarily raised two levels. You have found yourself after discovering a secret door hidden behind the statues in the fountain room that was uh, in the ice chambers, which you didn't know where you were to begin with. You went down another three hundred and fifty feet, straight down another uh, um, another staircase and opened up a, another secret door that was easy to find on this end that led into a completely destroyed large chamber that appeared to be the, the previous quarters of a Pentarch, which is a high ranking military officer, um, both today and in the past in the Ar ancient Archontian, you've determined that it was probably ancient Archontian in nature. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff to sort of see and, uh, and pick through here that we haven't gotten to, cause this is where we ended it. But once again, you are even further out of your depth. Like you really have no conception of really where you are. Um, so, but just uh, to feature real quick, the idea of the verticality of what we're doing here, Ted has done an amazing job of trying to piece together the small uh, amount that they have actually uncovered and tried to piece it together into something that um, seems reasonable. So let's head over to Albert here, and not Albert, sorry, Miro. And... Um, Check out Ted's map here. Ooh, it's yeah. it's not a sexy map. I I think it's a very sexy map, but it looks like something a goblin would draw in the dark on a piece <laughs> of paper he's had crumpled in the bottom of his pocket yeah. for the last two months. So Perfect. trying to figure things out, folks out there, you guys can compare Ted's view to the. Oh, real view. that's so unfair! Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Ted's yeah. map is uh, has you know the the real deal. The answer key is there is actually a side view map in Ardenbool, of course. Um, oh wow! I figured so that would be. Feast your eyes and compare and contrast. I think that Ted has done a uh, pretty phenomenal job, given that he doesn't have really any scale to work with relatively. Um, you can uh, you can put some helpful comments in the comment section in our next yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Please do not work on the map. We That'll promise not to look. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, you missed a secret room. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I I do think I'm I'm pretty confident that the two plunger pyramids are in line based on our maps. Uh, but as far as the the scale of depth below the ground level, I mean, I wasn't even really trying to be it to scale. I was just trying to put them in order. In order, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. And then if we scroll down here, you can see that he's just sort of arbitrarily put uh, the most recent <laughs> delve where you're completely yep. fucked. <laughs> you can tell where we are right, right next to Satan's summer house. All yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So we're making an assumption that you're very, very deep, which isn't a bad assumption to make, but you never know. So, uh, yeah, nicely done. And uh, Ted will continue to fill that out as more answers are uncovered. Yeah. In the meantime, we have a big blank map. We have two blank maps, actually. But Yeah, it's um, true. Currently. Sorry. Sorry, Matt, you're dead. <laughs> that was fast. All right. So let's hop back oh, over here. here. <laughs> to this level, shall we? And the you, To the Pentarch level, right? The Pentarch level, yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, unable to resist the urge to explore the secret door and remain in the ice chambers that you've been, though the threat of what looms up above still weighs heavily upon your mind, um, you guys have delved down deep to see where this ended, and so you're going to give it a little bit of a look-see. So a recap for everybody. What is in this room? So um, it is a 20-foot uh, by 30-foot room. There is a broken door that has been broken inwards upon the west wall. You guys are emerging from the north wall in a secret from a secret door. Um, there is uh, a pastoral mural that kind of depicts good government and uh, on the east wall. However, across the image, written in large mythic letters, obviously not part of the original painting, um, is written, uh, May the Pentarch suffer in the pits of the abyss for his stubbornness. His honor has gotten us all killed. This is how you've learned that it was the Pentarch's chambers. Um, most of the furnishings, which include a bed, a wardrobe, a desk, some easy chairs, a low table, several display racks, like this was like a pretty luxurious chamber, have all been smashed to bits. 
Um, and it looks as if vandals were kind of like moving through here looking for valuables of some sort. There is a lot of debris of wood, linen, and silk. You um, immediately spotted, because it's quite large, a painted teak folding screen that's on the ground. Um, uh, one panel de depicts like a severe-looking bald Alcantian aristocrat. It appears to be worth some money, probably about 200 gold if you can bring it to like a collector. Um, it's also a little bit unwieldy. And there's a whole bunch of piles of debris, which you, you haven't really investigated yet, right? Like you just sort of stepped into the room. Okay, so there was one thing that I, when I was rewatching the episode to kind of get my bearings, um, I do have to correct, and it may affect your decision making. Um, you had asked whether or not you could pass through the secret door, the secret door freely. You cannot. Okay, but um, but you did when I re-listened. You guys did spend a turn to determine whether that was the case. So what I'm going to say is what you did learn was how the door opens. Okay, so I'm going to say right now that there's got to be someone, like probably Yost or a retainer, like holding the door open. Okay, and then um, as you spent that turn last session actually determining the mechanism of the door, you would be able to be like, no one close that door because it, we will be shut out. Okay. Um, so we we know how it opens and closes, but we can't open it? Is that what you're saying? It, it's open right now. Yeah. And then you've learned that if you let it close, you do not have the means to open it again because the um, there you see that on so the, the the secret door is on the northern wall right on the western wall like directly you know on in that corner on the western wall there is a small oval depression in the western wall stone okay okay and you have determined through your thorough searching from that past turn last session that something must be placed in that depression to allow the door to open up again oh that's fascinating that's cool Okay. All right. So somewhere um, on this oh, floor. I'm muted. I've been talking this whole time. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Dave. Somewhere oh, go, on this go, floor, go, there's Mike. probably a skeleton lying in a corner with an oval disc. Yeah, right. Um, John, just to uh, first, I said thank you. Thank you, old great GM on high. Um, but, yeah, of course uh, you did. Uh, <laughs> I need my dues. But uh, to clarify, um, not to, not to uh, weasel that. When you say it's okay if our retainer had been holding the wall, the door, mm -hmm. does that apply to the door at the top as well? No. That one still, okay, you so heard it shut um, when okay. you were coming down. And remember, that's like 350 feet above you. That's like, whoa, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you guys should tell me like who was holding the door. Uh, I, 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 why don't we have Elizabeth hold it? Because she's, well, I mean, she's very, very useful, but uh, not as useful as you. <laughs> John, is, is the door on like a spring? Like, does it want to shut? Or or is it like if you just leave it open, it stays open? Uh, it, no, it looks, well, it is not on a spring, but it has some sort of mechanism. Goran, I, 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 I can't explain it as John. I can't explain it, but it's it's like a no, secret No, but it door wants to close. It's it, going to close. Will, yeah. It will close on its own eventually, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So Good. there must be a um, like a latching mechanism inside the door frame that we could see that keeps it shut. Um, could we, if we allowed it to close with something like a piece of wood from the floor or a, one of our spikes or something like that, that allows it to kind of close but not actually latch shut. Yeah, like hold it open with like a broken table leg or something like that. Well, I was thinking so it even. To the, if someone were to also sort of come in here, they wouldn't immediately see it's a propped open door. But we would know that it can't latch and lock closed because we've wedged something in there, you know? Like in the, you know, crime movies where you put a piece of tape over the latch and mm -hmm. then you're able to sneak back into the building later kind of thing. Like candle wax or something like that. Right. You got it. What do you think, John? So it's, it, well, uh, so it's a secret door, right? So it blends yeah. in perfectly with the, with the wall. And right. I don't really understand like how the latching mechanisms and stuff like that work, but you're, um, it's, uh, it, it, like a table leg would be more, I, I could buy a table leg more than I could buy, like, um, putting a, like wax over a latch that I don't even know, know is actually there. Fine. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I, I have a suggestion for us. I don't think we're having uh, a lot of plans right now to fully explore this level before we go back upstairs anyway. Right. Why don't we just like leave it open? We'll have Lisbeth there. She can like, just in case she can uh, uh, take out, she's got some iron spikes in her pack. She'll put one like in the door for, just in case she slips or whatever. So that's going to be held open for us. And let's just look around a little bit and head back up that way. Yeah. 
and and we yeah. can search this room first we haven't really gone through any of the you know uh, piles of shit all over the place anything. so yeah. we can search that maybe we'll find the the oval disc in this garbage pile uh oh contrary i've done something i've farted in the room and i've looked knowingly <laughs> at everyone around me. <laughs> stinking cloud cast stinking cloud all right i am a oh, great right. wizard <laughs> Goblin, no <laughs> <cares. Spell slot. laughs> yeah, that's uh, right okay so uh yeah so it's very very quiet you hear nothing from the corridor beyond um nothing is pinging for your infravision um light is being cast by uh, avariciosa's continual light on his yes. necklace um yes. And uh, yeah, you're all just sort of congregated there, kind of wondering what the heck is going on. We did make clear, too, that there was no signs of uh, actual uh, physical violence. Like there doesn't appear to be any bodies or corpses or blood or anything like that. It just looks like the place was thoroughly ransacked and deliberately destroyed. And obviously yeah. some frustration was vented upon the wall. Yeah. Um, I would like Mort to move to the door and poke his long nose out into the hallway or the room on the other side. And so just so we don't get surprised by something on the other side of that wall. Okay, sure. Okay. So Mort, when you poke your head out, you can see that you are looking down a 10 foot wide corridor that goes 10 feet uh, to the West before it inter intersects with a 10 foot wide North South intersect uh, uh, corridor. A T intersection, a T intersection after 10 feet. Okay. Um, uh, about five feet. To the right, so that in the north, there is a door uh -huh. in the middle of the wall on the north side. And it's not uh, destroyed. It's closed. It's so, closed, yeah. Wait. Uh, um, You're going to have to Sorry, where there. is this door again? It is five feet directly to the north around the corner. Around the corner. Okay. So, all right. Um, and Mark, you're right. using your, your very general infravision, so just shades of gray, basically. Um, right. So you're not picking out any clear details. And then uh, to the south, to your left, it goes down uh, well, with your infravision. Let's see. One, two, three, four. It goes down 45 feet to the south before ending at another door. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. So now at exactly. Is this, hmm? is this looking right here, John? Uh, yes, that's looking good. Yep. Now, 20 feet down, the corridor actually uh, 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 branches off to the west. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Do, do, do like this way right here yep and as well this once again because of your dark vision i'm sorry i'm making you redraw stuff ted but i have to go piecemeal at the time right. um at the far end of the southern corridor all right so right before the door at the far end it actually uh, -huh. uh goes uh the quarter goes to the east as well so like five feet backwards from the end of the corridor there is another quarter that goes east you got it. Well done. Okay. You're awesome. All, all of asking the, you for a survey right in the middle of me mapping here. <laughs> all you of like the corridors, Miro? Ted. So once again, I'm only giving you the briefest details because you have no light to work with. Nothing is pinging, which tells you something in itself. Everything is deathly quiet. Okay. And you are definitely kicking up a substantial amount of dust. Excellent. I okay. love it. Um, okay. Does this look about right there i gotta add some doors but that's that's basically right yes okay let me go get some doors from the oh i thought i had a map key on here oh there it is okay um, so the, i the will walls, the walls here are, do have um uh, uh faded frescoes that have long since disappeared and it's impossible to tell sort of like what they used to be most of most of it is just arcantian stone Okay, uh, Mike, you were going to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to um, reiterate that on the Discord, the plan that we had put forth was to explore for about six turns down here before going back upstairs to where we think the asylum is and kind of like delving into that area a little bit more, right? So, mm -hmm. guys, how much time do we want to dedicate to things like searching this room? It's going to take probably a turn 
to do a thorough search and there's all this like detritus and stuff in there who knows yeah. what we could find i just want to try and get everyone's like general feelings well i think um let's let's say a couple of turns of all of us searching this room and then then let's see where we're at how about well, that? I mean, david had his hand up too oh, okay you're, you're muted. muted none of us can hear you i'm muted again there i was trying to save everyone from the clicking and clacking of my keyboard uh, uh uh matt you go first and i'll go last it's fine Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, um, Mort's already spent about a, a turn like checking out this hallway. Why don't we concurrently spend one turn checking out the piles of garbage? I'm yeah. curious about this screen thing. Let me look and see what's on the back, yeah. what's under behind it. Yeah. And then let's all like gather up again and then we so, can stay kind of on our schedule. All right. So, John, I think what I would like to. Oh, so, sorry, David, go ahead. It's OK. Uh, what is everyone's feeling about? Because I know time is of the essence here. I love, I love the idea of searching. How does everyone feel about me popping my cloak and visibility and like doing a jog around the halls quickly, right? Just to see if we recognize any obvious landmarks. Is there a means for us to do that mechanically, John, without it requiring you to read every minute detail? Like, is there a way for us to just get a, like a quick layout of the, like the halls around us? Or How is are that you going to see, bro? You can do whatever you want. I would How light it, to, I'd light a torch. You know, but uh, I guess that's, oops. Oh, oh my goodness. So you're saying you'd like to go invisible and go hunting? Um, I, I just like, oh, we, we discussed the time limit. My my curiosity is less in, and again, not, not to belabor this too much. My curiosity is less in the particulars of any given room we're in right now, since our priority is going back up the temple. My, my curiosity is, oh shit, are we in? X place. Right. At which point Onwear would be willing, as someone who was like, oh, I almost just died trapped for my life, to, like pop an invisibility, even if there's light, the light source can be seen, and just like jog a quick, you know, at risk of his trip, tripping a trap and killing himself, jog a quick, like 100 meters and back kind of thing, right? Like, I definitely think searching. there's utility there, David, if you want to take that gamble, I'll right? Gamble. So, <laughs> right, I know. Okay. So, why don't we do this? Ted, you're spending a turn like looking down the hallway and analyzing that, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, me and Matt can do a search of the room with the uh, with the other guys. Like, Matt will want us to focus on the screen, I'll focus on the piles of like um, rubble or or you know, broken furniture and stuff like that, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do that as well. And then David can go do his like quick exploratory search and see what doors are open and what area, like. Exactly. Maybe yeah. there is a giant room of just yep. magic items. <laughs> like right yep. well, my, my, main, my main goal, just to clarify for John too, is like I'm going to not open any doors if I don't have to. No, I understand. I'm gonna, like, you're just trying to get the bearings. Open. I got it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, well, Ted, so, you're you're looking at the corridors. Does not uh, take a turn. You you basically popped your head in, looked around, okay. and I gave you the dimensions. So you can do whatever you want during this turn too. Okay, great. That that was gonna. I was like, I've already spent a turn doing this exact thing, David. I like. So yeah. what if I haven't? Then your plan makes a lot more sense. So, um, if only we had a naked gassy dwarf, that would be really the best way to do this. Yeah, yeah. But oh. um, uh, I think okay. Mort will just if you you know if you want to go running around invisibly, Mort will come back into the room and help search. And I have a hooded lantern, so I can close it if I see something that looks spooky. Okay, so, so just, be say, just be careful. I don't careful. know if you noticed it, Dave, but the the hallway is full of dust, mm -hmm. right? So a you might leave footprints. And B, no one's out there in this area. No one's been moving around through this area. So yeah, I, I suspect as much. If you, okay. if you guys don't want me to do this, I won't do it. Well, it's fine. Fine. It's just, right. yeah. Let's just do it. It okay. is so, fine. It's just, just yeah. David, mark, off, the mark off a use yeah. of the invisibility cloak. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have what? Three a day, right? This is your first use. Of three the day? a day. This is my first. Okay. Yeah. It's almost the end of the day too, which is good. Um, so uh, now uh, I just looked up the spell. So light sources, light sources become invisible but the light cast mm. is remains visible so the the actual okay. light is sort of like kind of in the air around you but um, i do have i do have a hooded lantern so i'm gonna just like in case i see something i'm gonna be at the ready to close got it yep no problem right. in fact right. why don't i like i mean it's, it's already like a flashlight beam right it's not like a eminence uh, it's directed yeah, yeah, yeah right mm -hmm. it's an aperture okay cool 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 all right. Yeah. So you go invisible and you turn on your light and uh, the, the little winking light uh, disappears through the door as you guys commence your search on where. Um, so uh, actually, let me get up Miro. 
So take a map. So yep. you uh, run through the hallways as quickly as you can. Uh, once again, mm -hmm. you are definitely are leaving footprints. Um, although the dust is very fine, so it's not like it's not like leaving an imprint on the top of the moon, right? It's like you know, it's sort of getting scattered all over the place. Um, and uh, the following dimensions are sort of what you are able to make out before you hit doors. Okay. Okay. Um, very very easy, Ted. So going down the western corridor, the western corridor yep. goes down for thirty feet before it hits a door in the western wall. Any and branches or other things? Nope. Just hits a door on the western wall. And then the only other thing of note is that in the southeastern corridor, the one that branches east at the bottom there, um, that only goes for five feet before it hits a door. So you actually have to shorten that bad boy up a little bit. Ooh. Okay. Can I ask one detail from you, John? Mm -hmm. Are all of these doors of the same make or, or and size or are any of them more prominent? No, they all appear to yeah. be the same. They are all hey, uh, um, well-made Arkantian wooden doors with iron bands, similar to what you've seen in the precincts of Thoth. Mike, okay. I need you to move your cursor because it's right where I'm trying to draw. I can't <laughs> see my line. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so, weird. So, I think Mike was being John, there. <laughs> yeah, John, as a as a one <laughs> one more move before I return to the guys and tell them what I see uh -huh. on the westernmost door, I'd like to run up and listen actually i'm not gonna listen i'm just gonna crack it open and look in oh okay western door so, okay <laughs> the one the one to, yeah he's feeling he's just feeling because i'm I'm, I'm, I'm just i'm just feeling like maybe that's uh a main corridor and the others are uh side corridors so I'm yeah then what that. you know what what's the worst that could happen really just <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> the list is long honestly <laughs> while, while, they're, while they're looking it up um we are not a sponsored stream but this is one of the most absurd things i've ever seen and i have to share it they make Boozy Sunny D now. Oh my <laughs> god. god. Oh my god. <laughs> I had to get one. I had to try it. Hey, uh, I can't I cannot say it's good. good. Sponsored. I can say good. it tastes exactly like Sunny D. So I guess that's, that's okay. good. Yeah. David. <laughs> yeah. On when you crack when you crack open that door. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you see something wondrous uh before you. Uh, that takes your breath away as you look at it. You are coming in to a very large chamber and uh, stretching out before you for 50 feet. All right. So it's 50 feet east to west, 20 feet north to south, and Onweir is entering in from the, um, the uh, northern portion of the eastern wall. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, but, Ted, as you're mapping, I need you. Um, <laughs> Uh, basically only, only draw, only draw the 50 feet. Well, let me start over again. Uh, Ted, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So mark off 50 feet to the West. Okay. That is, that is a wall. Okay. There is a, um, it is generally 50 feet wide. However, there is a 10 foot corridor that, uh, that leads southwards directly in the middle of the Southern wall. Okay. 10 foot corridor, middle of the Southern wall. Yeah. Heading south. Yep. Okay. Okay. There are two 10 foot wide corridors that uh, stretch northwards, one at 20 feet and one at 40 feet. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 20 feet. Do -do -do. Yeah. Is... Do, 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 yeah, you're, you're on it, Ted. Uh, now that goes off into the distance, and you can't see what's there for, for a reason I'm about to describe. Uh, but you can demarcate the rest of the room then, okay? So it's a 50 foot by 20 foot room, okay? Uh, now the chamber, is about, in here. <laughs> the chamber is about 15 feet tall, okay? There is a, um, there are, there is a pillar that is in between those two entrances to the north. Okay, that has been carved to resemble a 12 foot tall Arden. Okay. She is dressed in legionary attire and carrying her spear pressed against her body. There are oh. the corpses of what appear to be eight legionnaires that are scattered in various pieces across the flagstones of this antechamber. All right. They're, it looks like their weapons and armor have been destroyed by powerful blows, like they've been shattered. Um, and it looks Wait, like a few... actual 
bodies or statues of bodies bodies so bodies. there's a 12 foot tall pillar of arden but there are corpses of eight ancient legionnaires that are scattered about about him in front of him with uh uh which uh, everything about them seems to have been destroyed by powerful blows um there Arden is also uh, right there uh no it's actually in in the space in between right like it's so it's actually demarcating the two quarters it's actually it becomes two quarters because uh, that pillar is so massive yeah there you go yeah um, cool there are also two foot tall, two nine foot tall statues depicting one of Arden and one of Vool that stand in the southwest and southeast corners, respectively. Okay, um, and they are uh, smaller, but they still sort of tower over you as well. Okay, so Vool is um, his face is shadowed in his cowl with his robes, and Arden is uh, similarly uh, dressed and attired and uh, armed as the other version of her to your right. Okay. Um, is, uh, is she holding her spear in a similar position as the other one? She is, yeah. Okay. And so there's just like these corpses, like old, like they're desiccated husks. Like they're more skeleton now, but there is like a little bit of flesh still on them. And like their gear, you know, like if you took the time, you could probably be able to find something. Um, but uh, it's sort of like scattered around and stuff like that. That's where all that dust came from, gang. Uh, gross. So you're saying pillars, John. So they're not like a statue that is standing on like a plinth. Uh, yeah. So the they're added columns, right? No. So there's uh, the the statues in the corners are statues. Sure. Um, they're not on plinths, but they are freestanding statues. The large one in the north is actually a pillar that's supporting the roof. And is the is the one that's a pillar the one that's Arden holding um, the spear? Is it a, a stone spear or is it like a real weapon that it's, the statue is holding? It, it's a stone spear. Okay, so you guys know that those two statues on the in the corners of the rooms are the ones that are dropping the hammer on anybody who wanders in here, right? Okay, time to get a chicken out. <laughs> <laughs> there's a general there's a general smell of like dust and decay, but not I'll like there is. Not anything that like wrinkles the nose. It's just more of like like a, a, an ancient decrepitude here in this chamber. To follow up on Mike's thinking, John, mm -hmm. uh, I know these are like husks of the bodies, but like <clears throat> legionnaires as they are, they would probably be fighting, if not in formations, but intentionally. Are they facing a similar direction, aka defending against one of the statues in particular? Uh, that's a very good question. They do appear generally. Although it looks like there was a mighty scrum here at some point, sure. um, that they were facing generally southwards. Okay, so it's it, whether the statues are animate, like Mike's saying, or they are. This is like an antechamber they're protecting from an invasion. Or I mean, they probably are animate statues. But you know what I mean? Like we know we know that the doors were busted in in the Pentarch's room, and there was some sort of forceful uh, intrusion in the space. That's good to know. Um, does anyone else? I, there's nothing else. I immediately thing to ask before going back to you guys unless you guys have any thoughts but i mean yeah do you want to stay here to okay. do more investigation or should i switch should i switch over the rest of the group uh, uh, okay uh, don't want to ask me that question uh, well, i mean if you okay, do actually, that's what i'm saying i'm going to switch back over i'm going to cut back to them and then let's, you can stay let's switch I actually, back I have a thought. Time to think, david i okay i do have one thought of something i could test before coming back to you guys but if you guys want to switch well no, you can stay there third, just stay there you don't come back stay there yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, switching back to the rest of the group. Um, you don't hear anything from Onware uh, for a little while as you guys are, are rummaging around. Um, okay. So, first of all, uh, the... Pretty much tossing the whole room, I think. Yeah, you're tossing the whole room. So, Avaricios, the, the folding screen? Mm -hmm. Um That looks like it, it's quite large, so it'd be very bulky. I'm going to say it'd be about a three-slot item just because of its sheer bulk. Although it's not that heavy, um, it looks like it's it's so large that it looks like its original intent was that it was supposed to separate the room in um, in a half, basically. Like you could stretch it, stretch it out, and it would it would give some privacy to one half of the room. Um, okay, uh, but um, it's difficult to tell like what it was originally intended to depict, other than that one figure that survived of a bald Arcantian aristocrat. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's like an art piece. It's worth about 200 gold. It's a nice, a nice teak art piece. Um, the Gorin, the, uh, the rest of the crap on the ground, uh, it's all junk except, except for 
a very important thing. You find what appears to be a rescript. And I looked this up and I've completely forgotten what that actually means. So let me look that up. Does anyone know what a rescript is? The top of their head? I Google it. No. Uh, I, I think it's when you go to the pharmacist and have to get a new prescription. I, I don't so know. <laughs> it's a written answer as of a Roman emperor or a pope to a query or petition in writing. And or another definition is an edict, decree, or official announcement. So there you go. Nice guy Gaxian word for you there. Um, so you nice. find an imperial rescript, and it is from an archon. The Archon is the ruler of a large territory. Uh, Ardenvul always had an Archon whenever it was under Archontian rule. Okay. Um, mm. So the Archon, and so basically like Marius at one point was the Archon after he had completed the conquest, right? Um, uh, but uh, this is not, doesn't have Marius's name. So this is from an Archon named Pelas, P-E-L-L-A-S. And it's very, very clearly marks that it is Archon Pellis of Arden Vool. And it's dated AEP 1803. Okay. It is now 2993. All right. Long time ago, a thousand years ago. Um, and it's to Eustace Fazelton, J U S T U S, Fazelton, F A S E L T O N, Pentark. Of the cohort of Arden. Oh, okay. Okay. And it reads a very small message. And it says, Guard the sacred relics of Arden the Defender until your last breath. We are sending assistance and supplies. Good luck. And then oh. scrawled across that in a different ink, different handwriting, like really hard, it says, Lies. Okay. Wow. So this guy was ordered to guard. It might sound like the regalia. Is it sound like uh, the relics of Arden? Is yeah. Is that the? Would that be another name for the regalia, John? Well, weren't the uh, weren't those the regalia was like Mario's tricoder stuff? Yeah, but one of them was later. like a spear from Arden Vool or something Mike, like that. Right? Look at the recall you're talking about there, Mike. That's correct. Yeah. Now, not all the regalia have been has been pegged as things that belong to Arden and or Vool. But one mm -hmm. of them, yes, the Evan Spear reportedly was wielded by Arden. But just okay. that one. Just that one. Yeah. That hell that's that's a lot though. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So then if we kind of put together and and sorry guys if this is so obvious to you, Pentarch was this was the Pentarch chambers. The Pentarch got um probably captured or killed by his own men because he ordered them to stand fast and he got this order. And then somebody who found this order maybe on his desk when they trashed the room was pissed and was like lies. Or he wrote that himself because he knew that even though he had to follow these orders, it was all bullshit. So that to me means that even though this whole area may look <laughs> like a big place for Arden Bull's like spear to be chilling, maybe it's not. Sorry, when I say Arden Vool, I'm just, you know, I know there's two separate people, but you oh, know I know. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, so, that's pretty much how I read that as well, Mike. Okay, so I this is basically, this whole thing is a red herring, right? Like this whole or, area is, is potentially a red herring. I mean, the, the other way to read it is that the lies that they're talking about are the reinforced, or that reinforcements are coming. Oh, that's what I that's think. That's what I read right? that as, like the they, lies reinforcement. Isn't that what yeah. Mike so, said? No, I was saying that maybe, that not really maybe the whole area was a red herring and that there were no artifacts here but they were ordered to defend it anyway for some reason that we don't understand and maybe maybe what they were defending was like if they're all arrayed against the south yeah maybe those statues come to life and kill you or whatever but also they could have been defending from something that comes up from the south i think that's probably the case although i will find out uh i'm sure in a very deadly fashion <laughs> not too long but <laughs> I would also say, I, I, I love what everyone's thinking is, and I, this isn't a um, conclusion, this is a speculation, but like both things can be true, right? These guys could have been dummies for an invasion, protecting artifacts that were not there to buy time for the Archon and other people to flee with them or some version of that. Again, I'm really reaching at that point, but 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 I, I like both theories and, I, and I'm just saying, yes, 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 and, porque, you know. Uh, interesting. 
Um, so it's it's likely though that if the Pentarch was in that room and had, let's say, a sacred relic and the little key in the depression to open that secret door, he booked it up mm-hmm. the stairs. Right, leaving yeah. behind a bunch of confused leg- legionnaires who are like, "What the hell?" Smash the place up. On their way back, a couple of statues decided to kick their asses and sort that little problem out. I think you're right. Yes, a hundred percent. That makes a like, lot of sense. Ted. So, um, uh, Onwe and Avaricios, as the more like learned people, um, that might be more in tune with history. Uh, the date. Uh, so, two things strike out. Uh, uh, kind of re- re- recall your your lessons as. Uh, from kids from being a kid um first of all the date 1803 and then the name um archon pelos is known to you uh i think even gorn and mort would probably have heard of archon pelos just because he is associated with the fall of arden um 18 1803 that specific date for you historians out there um is the date that archontians were evacuated from arden Okay, uh, there was a, there was a mass evacuation because of some sort of catastrophe or something like that, right. and basically it was like pre eighteen oh three at Ardenvool, and then there's post eighteen oh three, and that's when the Archontean Dark Ages basically began, um, when all the Empire's forces sort of re, uh, kind of retreated backwards and they kind of regrouped. This was all as a result of the um, the fallout of the civil war between the Theosophs mm-hmm. and the Sordians. Amazing. Um, so, but the last evacuation occurred in 1803, and Archon Pelas oversaw that. He was the last. He's basically the last Archon of Ardenbull. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, qu- one quick, uh, just correction. Uh, Onwir was never a child. He was born of sort of a membranous sack, mm. ten feet under. A, a peat bog. Right. You're like, a, you're like a uh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, just, I just, you know, it just sort of emerged, <laughs> frothing forth from My the uh, sulfuric fin that you lakes. Were, you, were, you were born of woman fair. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was um, eminently uh, an adult and forever shall be. <laughs> I find that's interesting because I'm getting the feeling like Onwir regularly tells weird stories about his background and they don't ever repeat themselves. And <laughs> Like there's always some new myth that has just suddenly come up, it's all part especially of when he's been drinking. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> this this might be a character note that uh, right. my, my okay. goblin friend is picking up on. <laughs> was there anything else that the rest of the team was doing in the room, or are we going back to Onwear? Well, well, I have. Uh, there were two. There were two uh, other guys there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Nyal was in, and um, uh, uh, Nyal, right? Nyal, um, Mort, and Yost yeah, have yeah. all not searched so um so gorn Gorn said he was basically searching this stuff so like the 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 detritus has been searched was there anything else that you guys had wanted to do that people haven't done anything yet uh yeah i I, go ahead ted well no it's fine go ahead (laughs) i'm sorry i keep jumping all of you um i was just gonna ask Niall to check for uh secret rooms or compartments storage things sounds like mort probably had the similar idea um uh um, there, are, there's that southern wall, and there's that um, uh, eastern wall that both look uh, promising. Mm-hmm. Mort, do you have a do you have a, a preference? Uh, well, if um, so, tell you what, Yost will take the southern wall, and Mort, um, if there are any like pieces of furniture that are still intact, like say a drawer, look for a false bottom in a drawer, or mm-hmm. the false back of the wardrobe, or anything like that. Got it. Okay, very cool. And so y'all will check that eastern wall for right, any so the rest of the, the rest of the team is looking for secret compartments and stuff like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's all takes place in the span of a turn. Um, you can c- confirm that there does not appear to be any other exits or secret compartments in the room. Um, so you have you officially this all happened actually in the span of a turn. Everything just has happened this session is ten minutes. Um, we are efficient, baby. Yeah, very efficient. So you can you can confidently say that what you have found in the room is what there is to be found in the room. Um, okay. And uh, meanwhile, after that ten minutes, you have not heard from Onweir. Going back to Onweir, what do you do? All right. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things, so many things. The temptation. <laughs> I was going to get real fancy, but I don't think I'm going to get real fancy. I think I'm just going to go with it. So. Uh, you'll recall the plan on here. Remember the plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. One, okay. one turn, one turn. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. 
Uh, you'll recall I asked our dear uh, 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 flesh priest to uh, uh, give me a rope and grappling hook that has been wrapped around my body. I am going to unwrap said thing and play go fish with a legionnaire's corpse, the closest okay. to me. Okay. And try to snag the grappling hook on. Are they wearing laminar armor? Or uh, they're wearing like segmentata. That's what I wear. Try, try to try to hook a, a collarbone or something like that. Oh yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, you can totally do that. So yeah, no, no time. You can. It, yep. Pull it, up. It, it drags across the floor, leaving a big wake of dust. Does the noise, the screeching of the metal, or anything like that, awaken any activity from the statues? No, but uh, okay, but it's definitely loud. It's like um, yeah, I figured. I would actually say that you guys in the other chamber could probably hear faintly the sound of like metal scraping against stone. Fool of a tuck. <laughs> um when i when i get the corpse assuming it hasn't animated and stabbed me with a gladius or, or something like that mm -hmm. i'm gonna pat it down uh and do a search of what's on it okay um so you um uh what is that hold on uh i gotta look up this word too one second no worries <laughs> Oh, okay, this is what I thought it was. All right, all right. So, um, uh, on this body, you find um, actually some ancient uh, Arcantian coins, which are worth more, right? So you actually find uh, about ten ancient silver pennies, and you find five ancient gold solidi. Mm. I'm sorry, man, but are these guys not paid in salt? This seems bullshit. <laughs> All right. Uh, nothing else. They give these poor guys. They just give me chunks of coin. Nothing else evident on them, John. Not or... really. Not a bit of any value. Uh, is the how armor easy any could good? I... <laughs> so maybe whether it is or not, I'm putting it on. <laughs> um, yeah. So the I don't know if I've ever showed you this, but um, so the silver pennies are about the size of a dime, um, but right. they're thicker, thicker and heavier than a normal silver piece. And they are the same as like the ancient gold soul die. They're worth 10 times more. So they're worth like a gold piece each, um, This the silver. Um, on the obverse, most of them, these, the ones that you're looking at, uh, feature a bust of the emperor wearing a military helmet um, surrounded by the letters of his name. So this actually does say, uh, um, actually not palace. It would, I don't, I don't know who the emperor was at the time of the, can't remember now. That's really um, useful. Though. Emperor yeah. Bob. Um, we could work out the date based on that. This is true, cool. yeah. Uh, the, yes. Although it depends on like when it was minted and how long it was carried. Sure. Through, you know. um, the reverse it's contains a point. gladius with the words conquerendum est. It shall be conquered. Uh, so that's what the silver pennies do. The gold solidi, which you guys have seen a lot of, a lot of. Um, we all we know about them. They have a bust of the emperor wearing an olive wreath surrounded by the letters of his name. The reverse has an image of the emperor in a chariot pulled by four horses. So there you go. Very cool. Very that, cool. That gladius is on the coin, not on the legionnaire. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a correct yeah, on yeah. the coin. He didn't have Except a weapon. On, uh, not that it is been smashed. Like he didn't drag that along with him. Okay. Can I can I uh, take his armor off and put it on? Uh, you can. Yeah, it's not great. So yeah, I mean it, that would take some time, like a turn. Are you are you still able to cast spells if you're wearing armor? Um, okay, I'm going to wait on the armor if it's going to take a turn. I was going to put on the armor as a defense if I walk into the room is the reason I was going to do that, but it's just too much time. So I'm Definitely not going to do that. Definitely takes time, yeah. Um, uh, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm invisible still. I'm just going to, I'm going to walk into the room. I'm okay. going to walk into the center of the room and see if anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, I mean... <laughs> you move past the large pillar of Arden um, mm. and through one of the corridors and it opens up both quarters lead into the same room okay mm -hmm. it opens up into a extremely large chamber it is uh, once again 50 feet east to west after only 10 feet ted okay so it's Wait, like which way did you go on north, north, north in the north. center of this room yeah yeah so there so, the... so he's going through he's going through one of those passageways it open both passageways okay. lead into the same room that room is 50, okay. is 50 feet east to west after only 10 feet okay the uh, the entire uh, length of the room is one two three four five is 60 feet however 
the top 20 feet is like a round is like a um like a rounded apse you know what i mean i do 60 feet you said 60 feet at the at the apex of the apse right so right down the middle of the room oh. it's like 60 feet but then yep. at the, the mm -hmm. last 20 feet is just a, like a rounded curve okay um yeah. Give me a second here and I will make that happen. Yep. I'm just going to describe the rest of the room, um, but those are the basic dimensions. Uh, so the what's amazing about it at first is the moment that you pass through the passageway on where is that you the entire ambiance of the room uh, changes because the entire hall is completely sheathed with oak with wood. So just like the, the just the color of the place looks completely different, right? Um, this includes a very striking and well made barrel vaulting that's made out of wood, out of oak beams, right? And you know, oak is sort of like a like a whitish sort of wood, right? So it's like you know, bright and um, beautiful, and beautiful looking. Uh, there is floor to ceiling carved paneling and interlocking flooring. So there's actually a sort of like that macrame. Is that the word? Um, not macrame. No. Is that the word? Not macrame. Uh, macrame Marketry. is like that little art form where you take paper, but like the interlocking, <laughs> interlocking four yeah. things like this, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. What's Marketry. that called? Marketry. Marketry? Okay, I thought it was a network. Yeah, close enough, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, there are... Okay, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of crazy shit in here. Um, so down the, down the middle of the, of the, uh, of the room, uh, there are two long tables. Each of the tables is a, about 20 feet long and they give, there's about a, about a 10 foot span in between them. Okay. Um, and on these tables, there is a massive amount of stuff like a lot of stuff. But before we get into what's on those tables, um, at the top of the tables and directly in the center of the room, um, uh, 20 feet south of the northern point is a very large statue. Um, it's a 10 foot tall statue of Arden, once again, this time draped whether what appears to be important personal objects, the statue itself is mostly onyx, like black carved stone. Okay. But the, uh, but ivory has been used to depict her face, her hands and anywhere else where her skin has been exposed. But the rest of her is like black. You never seen this before. It's very striking. Um, and it is fabulously valuable. Like you think that if you would manage to be able to drag this particular statue out of solid onyx and ivory out of here, it would probably fetch about 30,000 gold pieces. All right. Um, now, this one shows Arden in a pose that you have seen in many books and paneling and most specifically at the falls themselves. The largest statue of Arden is, is this is weary Arden, the weary soldier. Okay. She is resting on one knee. Okay, um, and leaning on her spear. This is exactly the same pose that you know of from the falls, right? Her helmet, um, uh, yeah, she's wearing her helmet, got her armor, and has her spear. They all appear to be actual items, like like things that have been uh, that she's uh, has been adorned with, right? Um, uh, let's see. She the spear wouldn't be black, would it? It is not black. No. Uh, but it is but it's nice though. But it's beautiful, beautiful, beautifully carved and shining. Um, her helmet is also uh not you know, not onyx, right? Um, neither is neither is the field plate that she is wearing. She has like an elaborate set of field plate that she's wearing. Um, she is wearing a uh uh large girdle around her waist that like comes up like right underneath her breast, like, like a massive, like WWE, like championship belt sort of thing. Right. Um, she has a gold signet ring on one of her fingers. And, um, now none of these things that she has been adorned with, have you ever associated with any of the legends 
or the 12 labors of Arden that you've heard of before. It's all like foreign to you. It's like very, very odd. Okay. Yeah, Mike. And every, sh her statue's 12 feet tall. Uh-huh. Uh, no, this one's Which 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall, sorry. 10 feet tall. But regardless, that means it's a spear that is proportionate for a 10 foot tall person. That's correct, yeah. And a helmet that's proportionate for a 10 foot tall person. That's correct, yeah. So mm -hmm. Probably they're decorative items, right? Like you're not going to put on a helmet. You'd be bonk. You look like Dark Helmet from Spaceballs, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay. Um, have so, we established anything about the hats that on wear wears that would indicate to you that, <laughs> that would be perfect? <laughs> so that's that's the one thing. So that's like when you walk into the room, you see like the long tables, the oak paneling, and then you see that statue that has all this like crazy gear on it. Now the paneling itself um, is interesting. Okay, it tells the story of the life of Arden, including scenes of her youth as a small girl living among the legionnaires in the cantonments, her oath before the magistrates making her sola which is a term for a woman that is legally free of male authority. Um, her military career as a Spatharios, a Dekark, a Kentark, and a Polmark, each, uh, which is like how she kind of rose with the ranks, right? Um, each one is like a higher rank. Each of the 12 labors, which you have the book, right? Well known to any- Does it include any... the actual full story of the 12th labor? Uh, well, no, it doesn't. So the 12th is always like, like the nebulous one, but good recall, Ted. That's nice. Okay. Um, uh, so it, 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 picks, it has scenes of each of the 12 labors. Um, her, and, um, it also has her triumphal procession through Arkantos to meet the emperor. Arkantos is the actual capital city on the island in the ocean. Um, the paneling is extremely valuable, um, difficult to disassemble and transport, of course, um, but it looks to be about as equal in value as that statue at the end of the room. Massively valuable. Okay. Um, now, that's the I'm panel. never letting Gorand in here. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on, we have these two mm -hmm. low tables. All right. One to the left, one to the right. Okay. On the left, uh, this appears appears to hold artifacts from Arden's career in the Legion as she rose to the ranks. And it's well known that she was part of the mighty 14th Scutarii Legion, the XIV Scutarii. Um, there is a, uh, let's see here, one on a second. Um, yeah, so the, the block, the stone block is four feet tall that holds all this stuff. There is a huge battered legionnaire's tower shield. Um, it has the broken slave collar insignia emblazoned upon it, which was the mark of the 14th Scutarii. It looks very, very nice, although it is battered. There is, um, Ted, what is the name for like a shorter gladius? Does it start with a D? Spasso. What is it? I think I think it's a spatha, yeah. Spatha, yeah. Okay, that sounds right. Yeah, a spatha um, that is gleams in the light projecting from your hood and lantern as you kind of move it over top of the table on where, um, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that the edge of the blade itself is so sharp that it almost disappears at the edge. Right. Bring uh, that to me, David. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> Me. There is a. Uh, he was going to show back up, and he's going to have like all this stuff on, and he's like, "I didn't find a thing." <laughs> there is a. Illusionist baby. <laughs> right. I, this doesn't. I can't find this, but a, a, a fla, flamulan, flamulan, a p h l a. I think it's probably like a like a banner. That's why I'm, I'm going to say it's a banner. Um, uh, badly worn of the 14th, so it's like a big, you know, like a. Uh, I'm going to say it's like a big staff that has like a crossbar that you hang like the insignia in cloth, right? Okay. okay. Like a, ba a badly battered uh, one. Very Roman. Of the 14th. Yeah. Um, uh, there is an actual broken slave collar on there. There is a gold ceremonial pole marks helmet. Uh, much more sort of like uh, what would be in the Met rather than actually used out in the field. Um and yeah, yeah. So it looks like oh, there's all this sort of grand, standard, you said? grand stuff on there. The most like mundane thing is this broken slaves collar, right? That kind of doesn't fit with the rest of it. Um, but yeah, that all appears to be like artifacts associated with her time with the 14th on the right. John, side, do they see, 
Do they seem to be like laid out like in a museum or are they yes. just like tossed yes. on the that's table? That's exactly how they're doing. They're like, they're really like reverently placed, placed along the length of the 20 foot stone table. Okay. Okay. So this is we have it. Relic. Relic. So, uh, that, that was in the letter. This is the relics, the right side. Okay. Um, then I'll let okay. you guys decide what you want to do. I'm just kind of give you the picture. Sorry. So long. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, this one appears to hold relics that are associated with the 12 labors. All right. Uh, there is a necklace of bear claws that is strung on a silver chain, which is referencing the fourth labor. We'll go, we'll go through these at a different time, but just take my word for it for now. Um, there is a shell of a giant Triton works to be like, like a huge massive shell that, uh, that speaks to the seventh labor. looks like it would be worth a lot of money. Uh, a circle of sardonyx that is intaglioed with an image of a heron eating a fish associated with the 10th labor, a three foot long tarnished brass trumpet associated with the ninth labor, two vials would have appeared to be dried blood associated with the second labor, um, and a pair of long tusks associated with the third labor. Mm. By, by the way, you got it all. The, the Roman flag on the staff is actually called a vexillum. Mm. That's what I thought. Yeah, I'm not so that's sure why. So it was a standard, yeah, though, right, John? That's what I'm was saying. It it was, I, I can't find or... Amblon anywhere. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to email Richard. P P H L A M O U L O N is the word. H L P H L A M O U L O N. If any commenters out there know, please drop us a line if we don't you find it. Probably right translate now. it from Latin if there's a uh, Google Byzantine. Translate. It's a Byzantine. Oh, it's Byzantine, right? We're doing. It's totally this. I, I had a suspicion this was Byzantium instead of Rome. This mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Okay, that's um, to take a left turn uh, instead of the right turn. Love, it's it's a deep this. historical cut, kids. <laughs> it's, it's a, a uh, Byzantine cut. imperial banner, the Basilion Flamulon. Okay. Um, and you can see them now if you were to look at Byzantine coins or the windows of the palace of the Porfiri Porfiriogenitus. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I was, pretty close. Uh, I was pretty close. John, yeah. is that everything to describe in the room? That is everything now? to describe in the room. Yes, that you can see. The, everything is the quiet. first thing on there. Yep. Sorry, go ahead. I'm done. Oh, my God. Baby, man, you got to detect magic in your, in your, in your memorized? No. I don't have detect magic, unfortunately. <laughs> He's got read magic, which is what the smart play was at the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, don't, I don't even have detect magic. Uh, I don't have the spell at all. Um, I, I, that, that's that's your boy, uh, uh, Avaricious, yeah, that's but not, that's not, good not, to not have to be another user. day. <laughs> yeah. um, I do illusionist that I am, and though there is a, a thrumming in my loins at the side of all of these, right? Uh, a thrumming. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and everyone was, and everyone unsubscribed. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to cast my newfound spell with some suspicion of the opulence in front of me, dispel illusion right at the center of the room, which is a 20 foot cubic radius and see if anything around me changes. Okay. Uh, that's very cool. All right. Did you just disbelieve? Is this that is more exciting. No. This whole room could be an illusion. I mean, you, you never know. You could be an know. illusion. <laughs> I, I, you I might just spell illusion. yourself. <laughs> uh, that's a very good use of the spell. They, um, unfortunately, um, nothing seems to change in the room. Okay. But it's a... All right. That's a... You know, sorry, sorry. There's, you know, there's, there's, there, there are no illusions in the room. Everything appears to be what uh, it is. Yeah. The lack of anything changing is still the best possible response you can give me to using that spell. So I'm yeah, not disappointed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, this is, this is the clarity I wanted. Okay. Um, on Weir would probably do differently, but I'm very cognizant of the time that we have, and I want to be efficient. Go ahead, Ted. I just want to say, I think now those ten or sorry, those eight bodies. We're actually defending this room. Yes, 100% yeah. they were. Yeah, from the south. Yeah, from the south. With Just that in mind, with that in mind, oh. were they getting ready to to flee and wanted to loot this room so that they didn't leave with just their you know five gold solidi? 
I don't know. The impression I get is the, the devotional aspect of everything, everything being placed, including the stuff on the statue, feels so last stand to me. You know what maybe, I mean? This yeah. is a, maybe, dude, but the but the legionnaires were pissed. They got left here to die, right? Like they were they were pissed. They got left here to die. They're probably like, we're out of here. We're gonna find a way out. Let's loot the treasury before we go. That's that's, that's what I think. And this well, can be the, solved with the chicken from the sack. Well, then, oh. if, if they were trying to loot that, the stuff wouldn't still be laid out like a museum on those they'd tables. Be wearing it. Oh. Yeah, they'd be wearing it. Um, I uh, oh, they would, they very, been very excited, very excited, but abundantly paranoid. Onweir is going to take all the sim, as he has, turn heel and run and look down the southern corridor, corridor to see what they were defending from. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So you're not touching you need anything. To bring me that spatha, bro. Just, hey. I'll bring you back. I'm just, you, we wanted to do six turns, so I'm moving fast. And if there's anything you guys want to be doing while I'm doing this, uh, you yeah, can look at the other back? doors. There are, there are three other doors, right? Like, yeah, look, we should, we need to listen because we need a way, make sure we have a way out of this. We don't want to be harried on our way out if we have to get out of here. I am going to say a turn passes from assessing the sheer amount of stuff in the room. Totally fair. So we're, we're two turns in. You're right? two turns in. Yeah, that's all it is. Well, our onwards two turns in. Y'all are one, their one turn in. Yeah, so we should come back to us. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, we're, it's going to be a a not fast forwarding uh, session tonight. Uh, but uh, regardless, it is about time to take a break and re up and go oh. pee. So okay, why don't we do that real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Bladders empty, beers filled. We are in a large room, obviously dedicated to Arden. At least on weirs. <laughs> um, so what's the plan? All right. Well, so once we've pillage the 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 pentarch's room we can either just sit here and wait for onward to come back looking guilty or we can <laughs> do something else to do so i'm mort's kind of inclined to go open a few doors himself to be honest okay and uh, i think that would be very wise i think yeah. mort would like to move up to the uh the northern door really and let's crack that one open okay <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to use those big ears of yours to maybe give a listen first. I don't, I don't, I don't want to curse anyone, but if I just did all of that seamlessly, and y'all die terribly the minute he opens one door. It's yeah. gonna be. I like how everyone's wild. filling their exploratory oats now that on we were able. To yeah, baby. Into an awesome yeah, room. the guy with the with the cloak that makes him invisible three times a day. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. cool. How long does that last, by the way, David? Um, uh, let me look at it just, just to be sure. Ten minutes. Yeah. One turn. One turn. I think it wasn't either. Wait, no, 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 no. It's three turns. It's 30 minutes. Three turns. Three turns. Okay. Three turns. Okay. So let me just mark this. I'm just cracking the northern door. I just want to like crack it open. Got it. Okay. It is open. Um, It opens up into not quite as grand of a chamber um, as Onward is currently exploring. But you have no awareness of what Onward is exploring in the first place. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. So the quarter continues for another five feet before it opens up into a square room. Um, 20 by 20 and you are entering in from the uh, south the the eastern corner of the southern wall okay okay um, 20 by 20 20 by 20 just a little bit Move of a that five thing, foot, Matt. what are you doing a five foot jut i'm not doing nothing you're moving okay <laughs> Are you trolling him? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Don't mess with his flow. <laughs> trolling the mapper? What do you want to be the mapper? So yeah, don't troll the mapper this. unless you're it. unless you're <laughs> as good of a mapper. Although although if anyone is, Matt would be That's the one. Good. All right. All right. So um there... okay, how's that? That's a great room. That's great. Everybody That's loves exactly that what it is. Yeah, there does not appear to be any other exits out of the room except the one that you came in. Um All right. the there are two beds here, two wardrobes, two wooden chests, and two racks for armor, all of which appear to be like, you know, uh, of a uh, you know identical basically. Um, uh, two racks for armor and weapons, um, and they do not appear to be destroyed. However, what draws your eye immediately more when you open in, and you're just using your your own eyes, right? Not light. Uh, it, well. Um, is Avaricios nearby with his continual light, or am I using my infravision? Well, do you call me over? I can come over if you would like to see better. Let's let's say I see something in there with my infravision that looks interesting, and I call him over to get some light in there. Okay. Okay. So 
putting some light in there, the first thing that you notice after you've kind of taken the furnishings is that on one of the beds, there is a corpse. Uh oh. All right. Um, the the corpse appears uh, does, does not appear to be a signs of struggle, and the corpse is not wearing any armor, but you can't tell what it was wearing because it's probably a decayed at this point. But likely that it was cloth of some sort because it's there is no evidence of metal on the uh, you know or leather or anything like that. Um, uh, it looks like both the wardrobes and the chests have been ransacked, and their contents have been strewn across the chamber. So there's a whole bunch of junk on the ground. Um, uh, you would have to kind of spend some time to kind of go through it, but there's a whole bunch of crap yeah. like on the ground that you could be very yeah. way through. Um, there is, uh, the both equipment racks are sort of near the door and one of them contains a set of ancient legionary armor. Um, and the other has a very nice looking spada. And there are also several pairs of boots there as well, uh, right underneath the rack itself. Okay, there is, once again, that same smell. Well, actually, this would be the first time that you smelled it, but on, that, on, that onward smell. So there's like a, the smell of like ancient decay um, yeah. in, in the room. Uh, it's also, I, th I, would, I actually think it might be a little bit more pungent because there does not appear to be any um, egress, like any means for it to escape, except from right. the way you came. Right. Um, somebody drank some nightshade. So I'm, it looks I'm like happy to... I was about to say that. Is there like a little glass, any glass bottles at his feet or uh, on the floor next to him or in his desiccated hand? Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on the ground, but one of those things is not like an empty vial or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. The You get the impression, Mort, that uh, th I would also say from your like military background too, Mort, yeah. that the fact that it's a relatively large chamber, 20 feet by 20 feet, and there are only two beds, like there's two sets of furnishings, right? That this, this is officer's a, barracks. It, you're exactly, yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah. pinning it for that. Like, not like, not like the Pentarch, which is where you exited from, right? Yeah. Uh, but just like, lieutenants or whatever, yeah. Yeah, but the, but these, these were relatively high ranking officers that had a little bit of space. They just had to live together, you know, but, <clears throat> um, but only one of them, uh, only, well, you don't know who it is, but there's someone on that bed. Can so, we take a look and and see if we can tell like what uh, what happened to him? Yeah, there any like? Yeah, I think we should enter and investigate the room with our with our turn. Okay, you step in. Uh, nothing happens. Um, you kind of really wade through a bunch of junk on the ground. The uh, the corpse definitely appears to be male, shrunken, shriveled, mostly skeleton, basically, um, but is not wearing any identifiable clothes. Uh, it looks evident though, that you can see that there is a gash across what remains of the skin of his neck, like yep. a long That's gash. What I figured. So um, supporting the rebellion theory and in the debris, uh, we'll say that, I guess more searches the debris while every associate sure. the corpse, um, there is, uh, you, you want to spend the turn kind of going through it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this the same turn. Okay, uh, so you find the following. There is a silver locket with a cameo of an Arcantian woman, a, a, a noble Arcantian woman in it. Uh, quite beautiful, quite small and delicate, worth about 200 gold, which is pretty impressive for a little locket. Um, there are a pair of jade earrings worth 100 gold. Um, there is a, a high-quality ivory box that is filled with writing styluses worth 50 gold. Um, there appears to be a small wrapped package in like wax paper of like a small little cube. And you can see that the wax paper, um, has started to unfold a little bit. And there's like a little bit of like red dust that is sort of escaping from that wrapped up cube. So you're not quite sure what it is. There is a diptych of wax writing tablets with ivory covers carved with fantastic beasts. So kind of like a wild thing, um, worth 185 gold. And there are three wooden toys, which are carved into the shape of jesters. They're about eight inches tall. Like they're like, they're like wooden dolls, um, that are, uh, worth 35 gold altogether. It's a pretty good haul. That's pretty good. And don't forget um, there's, there is a full set of perfect, perfectly preserved, legionary armor on the rack and there is a very very nice looking spada 
that is also hanging from that rack. Is it say, dwarf size? Uh, the armor? No. Yeah. No. Is it <laughs> of course not. <laughs> is it Yoke? Yeah. Yeah. Yoke is thinking maybe it's time to armor up a little bit. Is he? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> I come on. That room up there was so cold, and all he had on was a leather crotch pouch. You it's know, the, and I the mean, scarf. I gave him a scarf. Gave him a scarf. Uh, he's thinking a you know a, a nice wool uh, tunic and some armor and padding and stuff. Would I don't is he? <laughs> <sighs> You could do whatever you want. I'm just saying, maybe a loyalty check if you're going to force some fucking <laughs> armor on the poor man. I'm not forcing <laughs> it on him. <laughs> he likes he's, he's thinking it. He's no, thinking. I'm, he's. I'm thinking. not going to prevent you from from adding some AC to your guy. That's fine. We will all it, be very it, disappointed. It and breaks sad. his whole idiom, though. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Um, he uh, he will ask uh, Elizabeth. What do you think? Should I put on some armor? Do you like looking at my? Pectoral muscles. Uh, she, uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> break. Elizabeth looks at looks at you, looks at the armor, looks at yours, looks at the armor. You don't need it. You don't need this. No, no, no. You're perfect and beautiful the way you are. The way God made. All right. All right. The term is himbo. Himbo. <laughs> himbo. All right. Uh, What's that armor worth? Do you reckon? You want to no? wrap up the eye candy? No. So Ted, I'll put armor um, on Yost. Come on. I would say the the locket, um, the earrings, the wax cube. Yeah. Um, none of those take slots. The box of styluses takes a slot. Okay. Um, the diptych takes a slot. And yeah. I would say that I would say that all three of the toys like together would take a slot. All right. I think I'm gonna load up all this stuff. We're gonna take it. Why not, better right? later. We can dump it, but I don't know about the room full of the relics. So, uh, Mort um, and Yost can definitely carry all this. Do you take and the you, armor you know, and or sword? Uh, yeah, I think we should take the armor um, because yeah. you know who could use that is Nial. Why doesn't he just put it on then? Well, uh, I think Nial probably would. Nial takes a moment and puts that armor on. Okay, so it takes a turn to search, and then it will also take a turn to don the armor. You okay. okay with that? I think that's okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so that armor, um, so it's it looks ancient. Like, it's definitely out of fashion, but it looks, like, really well made. And y'all fills it out quite well. He looks like a total fucking badass, especially carrying the Ruiner. Um, um, and he, like, you know, places, like, the fucking helmet on top, and, you know, he's got the big old nose guard. <laughs> um, he's like, I like it. Feel good. <laughs> It, um, it suits you, my friend. It suits you well. well I'd say on a scale of 1 to 20, this is probably about a 16, I'd say. <laughs> oh. that, that is an update, yes. So that's what it's giving you an AC 16. That is much better. He was a, at a 14, so that's very good. That's oddly specific, Neil. <laughs> so that, that would actually mean that Avaricios and y'all both are wearing like ancient armor. Yeah, we uh, match. Right. or like bookends. Let's well, you actually yours is like a yours is like field plate. Um, so yours is actually a little bit nicer than what um, what they've got here. Well, I am the boss, so yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, anything else you want to do? What about the spatha, John? Is the spatha like on a scale of like one to five, like a two? <laughs> nice try. <laughs> um, uh, it is, who picks up the sword? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, and y'all will pick it up. Okay, Nyal uh, picks up the spada, uh, unsheaths it, and he, he his eyes kind of go wide as he kind of looks at it, and as it, ca it captures in Avaricius's light, you can see that the blade itself appears to have been, um, uh, the steel has been, uh, what's the word for it? I can't remember the word, but it, 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 like it's colored. So it's like been infused with like a, Ted, you probably know the word. Um, Amyling? Like anodized of some sort, or yeah, what like you mean? The, it has like a reddish, a reddish hue, not like bright red, but there's just like a subtle sheen of red that's been like put into the metal itself. Um, patinated. What is it? Patinated? Is that patinated, what you mean? Patinated. Patinated. Sure. I don't know. Sure. But um, okay. But it sort of has like a, a like a blood red sheen to it as he as he pulls it out, and you can see that there is a word in Mithric that is written um, uh, close to the hilt on the first part of the blade that's been engraved. 
and that word is ignis. I G N I S. That's awesome. We might want to introduce that to that icy girl upstairs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So that's that. You all gonna hold on to that? Uh, yeah, he will for now. Okay. Or or maybe maybe give it to Gorin who doesn't have a magic sword. Uh, Gorin, I have a magic spear. So. Oh, you do. That's true. It's fine. I mean, I would like to have something cooler, but, you know, I mean, Clavum is pretty cool. Cooler. Clavum's well, pretty cool. Feel free to just dump Clavum on the ground, and I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> hey, being so personal, John. <laughs> okay. I mean, y'all, what, what y'all, lo- y'all loves his axe, so... Well, you know. Um, why don't we let Nyal keep it for now and just warn him that it might be, like, a more potent item than his axe at some point. You know, okay, okay. Because Dave is going to bring me that other spot, though, which is going to be like artifact level. All right. So a turn was taken with um, y'all donning the honor. So let's well, um, armor. So let's go back to Onwear. So Onwear, you're you're planning on going checking out the south. Is that right? <laughs> Muted. I tried to unmute myself and zoomed in on my face. Um. All right. Ah. So, uh, yes, I would like to look at the chamber in the south pretty quickly. Um, okay. Can I, John? Uh, not to take too much time, but while I'm passing the 10 odd legionnaires, can I do a glance and see if any of them is adorned with a different armor or like looks like of a higher station because of whatever they're wearing or wielding? So they, um, they, they, it, very difficult to tell because everything's kind of been smashed, okay. but they do look to yeah. be like normal rank and file legionnaires. Like these do not appear okay. to be officers. Right. I'm not okay. going to do a deep search of their bodies yet. Let's just look in the south. Okay. Peering southwards, uh, using your hooded lantern, going, uh, you can see that it goes directly south, 10 feet wide, 430 feet. Um, at the, uh, after 20 feet, there is a stairway that takes oh. up the entire width of the corridor um, that goes uh, down. Not too steep, Sorry. but it does go down. I was tracking treasure, not mapping. Um, say that again. Okay. <laughs> so it goes down for 20 feet. It, it, it goes south for 20 feet, and then for the last 10 feet before the light runs out um, is stairway that goes down into the darkness. I'm going to walk to the top of the stairs and shine light down them. Do I see a bottom? Uh, you do, actually. Uh, so you walk to the top, and uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So it goes down. The staircase goes down for another 20 feet. So the entire length of the staircase is 30. Understand, Ted? So there's 20 feet of normal okay. hallway and then 30 feet of, of stairway. Yep. Okay. Um, and then I guess for that last 10 feet that your light would shine uh, on where you can see that it levels out and uh, it looks like the passageway continues to go south, but also right there at the base of the stairways, it also branches westward. Um. Well, I mean, I'm going to Go down there and look around the corner. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you, let's see. What are you moving at? 90? And, uh, I'm at 120 still. Yeah, I'm at 120 one, two, still. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten. Okay. So I would say, uh, getting from the middle of the Arden relic sort of place down to the base of the steps takes a turn. So am I? Are we at a, a cumulative group turn three now? Because they took a turn. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now we're all caught up with that. Um, I will. I will and, pop my invisibility cloak one more time. Right when that. Right in anticipation of that. Do you? Okay. Just so you know. Sorry. Uh, okay. One, two, three. Invisibility. Okay. At this point, uh, where you reach the bottom of the steps, and the rest of you have uh, finished looking um, into that small chamber, and y'all has uh, basically cinched up the last of his armor with Avaricius's help. Um, at that point, everyone feels just a little bit weaker. Oh! And uh, the the spells that you all knew dissipate from your mind, and you just the fleeting oh. memories of, of of faint power that you may have had. Um, <laughs> But tis tis gone. <laughs> insect plague, no, <laughs> no insect plague. Okay, that was surprisingly short lived. It was very short. 
All right. So uh, <laughs> that just shows what an oath to uh, the emperor is worth around here. Yeah, boy. do we no longer feel this have the feeling of brotherhood and stuff like that too? <laughs> well, you know that that is what it is. You have to you have to let me know if you do. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> All right. What do you, what do you do, Don? Where? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, peek my head out from around the corner and look in either direction and okay. see what I see. So you can see that uh, to the south, it goes for another thirty feet before it hits a wall. However, uh, there is a door right at the end of that thirty feet to the west. Okay, so that's okay. The, that's like the end of that corridor. So at the bottom of the stairs, straight south, thirty more feet. And then yeah. there's a 10 foot corridor off to the west. Yeah. Yep. And there's a door at the end of that 30 foot corridor, but it led, it leads, it's on the western wall. Okay. The western uh, corridor, okay. David, um, goes for 30 feet before disappearing off into darkness. Okay. You hear nothing. Quiet, dusty. Okay. Gang, we're at the 50% mark of the six turns we wanted to expend. Yep. I I am inclined to look west and leave this door closed to the south. If you guys uh, like that, otherwise I can turn back. Why don't you do that and we'll check some of these doors over okay, on our side to that's the what south? I figured, but I thought I'd check. Yeah. So okay, while okay. while y'all check those those doors near you, I'm gonna go west, John. Uh huh. And this and we're, I, I'm in I guess turn three or four. I'm in turn four now. The beginning of turn four. Uh, no, this, no, you just started turn three. Three. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'm at the beginning of turn three. Yeah, I'm going to go west. Uh, okay. Cool. It's going to go west. Okay, so we'll switch back over to the other folks. Ted, uh, that door is on the western wall, not the southern wall. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You uh, said that, and I forgot. All good. All right, going back to the main group, uh, what other door are you going to go for? Or what, what are you going to do? Uh, why, don't we, why don't we go south and have a listen? At the, there are two choices. Why don't we go have a listen? Which one? Oh, but at both of the doors? Yeah, sure. I'll, I can listen to the one to the south, and Ted, you were going to listen to the one on the on the east. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So taking a turn to listen, you both. Uh, not no one hears anything. Just quiet. Dead. Okay. Open my door. Which one? The eastern door. The eastern door. Okay. <laughs> the eastern door. Okay, Ted. It opens up. Um, there is a, a five foot little uh, continuation before it opens up into a large chamber. The, it opens up into a 20 foot east to west by 40 foot north to south rectangular chamber with no apparent exits except for the one that you came through. You are entering in on the western wall 10 feet down. Okay. Um, the chamber itself is 15 feet tall. It is painted with a flaking yellow paint. There are eight triple bunks, like, you know, like a big three, three person bunk. There's eight of them made of iron reinforced wood that line the Southern wall. There are 20 chests that are scattered among the bunks. Their lids are open and their contents are gone. Um, there are a few, what appear to be personal items that are scattered on the ground. Uh, looks to be like a bottle of something, uh, a stone canister, looks to be a crude set of chessmen, um, a whetstone, a flint, a small teakwood box. This is just sort of like what you're kind of scanning the room at. They're, they're just kind of piecemeal, kind of scattered all around. Um, easy to see because they're not like amidst other detritus, right? It's just sort of like those items are kind of scattered on the ground. Um, to either side of the door that you come out, uh, into on the on the north and the south, on that wall, on the western wall, are weapon and armor racks. There are three suits of ancient legionnaire armor. There are six spears, a gladius, two javelins, and fourteen tower shields are still present and usable. Uh, that's good to know, guys. I mean, we can we can do a lot with fourteen tower shields. There's no corpses in here, for one thing, and it also does not appear to be ransacked. It does look three like suits of armor. The chests have been opened and emptied, but they aren't like tossed around. The door hasn't been broken through, right? There just appears to be a, a little bit of the things that were in those chests has been sort of like left carelessly on the ground. Right. 
Um, you can quickly size up that there. Uh, okay, so what there is here, you can find uses for them, but um, but uh, I'll tell you what is valuable. But you can certainly just take the stuff and use it if you can find a use for them. Um, it looks like it was a bottle of hair, hair dye, but the dye itself is <laughs> sort of dried out. So it's basically like an empty, empty bottle that has like just kind of caked with dye. Um, <clears throat> there is a stone canister that actually um, it's like a little round, like a, almost like a like a kind of like a where you would, uh, you know, in modern day, you pu uh, pull out like face cream, you know, make a little round canister of stone. Uh -huh. um, and inside, though, are actually like um, some seeds, like packed with like little seeds. Um, the set of Arcantian chessmen is carved of wood and is actually fairly valuable. It's worth about 30 silver pieces. It also, you know, you've recently come across what appears to be a very mysterious chess themed area, um, if that means anything to you. But here they are. Oh, yeah. here's, here's some Arcantian chessmen. It, um, it does. <laughs> there, there is a whetstone, um, a flint, and uh, which aren't worth anything, uh, and a small teak wood box. Uh, same wood that the paneling was made out of right in the other room. Uh, that opening it up, it appears to be a snuff box of sort, and there is a powder in there, a white powder. Uh, the box itself, the <laughs> box appears to be about 70, probably worth about 75 gold. How much uh, is the white powder um, worth, John? <laughs> mm -hmm. We've Pretty entered armor, uh, the Los Angeles weapons. section of Art and Vol. <laughs> <laughs> John, you, you mentioned there were armors and weapons, I but I didn't get it because I was... Yep. Mapping. So there's a lot. There's uh, three suits of ancient legionnaire armor, standard armor, right? Um, in good shape, though. Uh, this yep. is the same kind of armor that y'all just put on. Uh, six One. spears, a gladius, a single gladius, two javelins, and four. The, what really dominates it because they're all faced out on the southern wall is fourteen tower shields. And um, what's the legion logo on the shields? Uh, is it the fourteenth? No, it is not the fourteenth. I don't. It, I, I don't have that information, but it's not the 14th. Okay. Yeah. Um, are any of the suits of armor dwarf sized? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dwarves, Question uh, for you then, John. Yeah. Um, if we were to take one of these armors to a competent blacksmith, he, could he resize it to dwarf size? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, at that point, Chad, I might as well just buy some armor, right? Like, I, I, we didn't have it money. Thousand year old armor. Yeah. Anyway, you would look keep, badass. Right, keep going. And you would look cool, like uh, me and Yell. Come on, then. Um, also, uh, speaking of uh, tower shields, so I know that we talked about before, like a shield is a shield is a shield. And because they're pointing out that there is actually a tower shield, the rule that I'm going to say is, is that if you want to use a tower shield, um, what it will do, because I don't want to. I don't want to like detail too much difference, but I, I do think a tower shield is like a significantly different sort of item. Um, so what right. I'm going to say is if you are wielding a tower shield, it would still only give you the plus one bonus to armor, um, uh, to AC. And it also gives you the shield shell be splintered thing and all that kind of stuff. But in addition, um, if you, the only action you take during a round of combat is to defend using your shield, you cannot be hit by mundane missile weapons. Okay, like, mm -hmm. like, but you, but you also right. can't attack. You're basically like turtling up, right? Like you're getting yeah. behind the shield, and you know, just you, you just you right. cannot be hit by missile weapons. Uh, does that sound fair? Yeah, that's that's awesome. Okay, there's no there's no like cover, partial cover, or full cover rules in this, right? No, that not really. No, um, the the downside of that because it does does give you the extra bonus is that it does take up two slots instead of a single yeah. slot. And uh, are there any goblin sized tower shields? <laughs> uh, not, <laughs> not that, that's actually that's actually a more reasonable question than a dwarf one because um, goblins did serve in the in the imperial armor uh but no there is not okay you know for a fact that they uh, do exist more because you have wielded one yeah yeah so uh if you guys could grab the javelins that those could actually be like stowed and used if there's a range thing um and y'all could use them it could be kind of handy y'all should grab them javelins are great range weapons yeah. Uh, yeah, and you said there were two of them, so he'll two, yeah. two. mark them. They um, reach a, a slot. Let's Got it. see. Anybody want to grab that teak wood box with white powder? Uh, yeah, y'all has y'all has room. I would say that, none, grab of, that? none of the items on the floor 
uh, I, I would say none of the items take up a slot except for the set of chessmen. That would probably takes a slot. Are you taking uh, some? <laughs> um, a, a full slot for thirty silver, dude. Come on, let's just. We don't have to pick up every yeah, piece I'm of trash. I'm going to get himself if he really wants them. Um, Mort's going to grab the stone canister with seeds, though. Okay. Why not just take the seeds? I'm intrigued by the stone canister. Okay. It doesn't take, doesn't take any slots. It does look to be made to, to hold these. Uh, okay, let's uh, switch back over to Onweir. Onweir, um, you're going to head west, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Heading back over... Um, you carefully move down that corridor. Uh, I'm just going to stop until I'm just going to have you keep going until you see something interesting. Is that cool? That is perfect for me. Okay, Ted, you ready to map? I am now ready to map. Yes, okay, Western so Corridor. I got he, thirty feet of it drawn. Yeah, he's gone to the thirty feet. Um, he's going to continue to go for another twenty feet, and right at the end of that twenty feet. The corridor continues on to the west. However, it does branch to the north as well, directly north. So just a northern little bit there. Uh, a northern bit, but uh, uh, ten f right beyond that northern breakoff, there is actually a southern breakoff. So, so right after that 10 feet there, there is a southern breakoff. And um, after five feet to the south, there is a door to the south. Okay. Uh, and the corridor keeps going west, or is it, it just it, turning it, into the south? It does. Thing? It continues to go west. Um, and I guess if Onweir is kind of moving in that direction, continue west. Yeah. Yeah. You could see that um, the corridor continues on for another 30 feet past the southern breakoff. Um, and uh, before it actually rounds a corner and heads southwards. However, there is a pair of double doors at the very Ooh. end of that corridor, um, about five feet down from the northern wall. Well, you know what I'm uh, Wait. <clears throat> the double doors are here? Uh, yep, you got it, Ted. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it, the corridor does not go north. It only goes south. It only goes south. That's correct. Yep. Okay, and then in this little five foot uh, jut down, it, it there's going to be a door there. There is a door, yep, mm -hmm. on the southern wall. Onward, what do you do? Uh, just to clarify, there was a door to the north, or that was just a hall that continues. It's a hall that continues, yeah. Uh, I see. Okay, well, I'm going to peek around the corner to the left, to the south, and okay. see how far it goes in my torchlight. Okay, so uh, if you're up in that corner. It goes yeah. down for 30 feet before disappearing. Okay. Wait, this is the north one or the south one? South one, sorry. South one goes 30 feet? Yeah, before disappearing. Um, yeah. And the north one, did you look up north? I did not look up north further. I just passed right by it. Um, okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to get a uh, sense of... I'm making guesswork of the map right now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Getting to I'm, the... I, go ahead, John. I'm just uh, for timekeeping. Um, getting you're moving at 120, so getting around yes. that corner and looking southwards exactly takes another turn. Okay. So that's the end of the fourth turn of the night. Just be aware there is the rest of the group has a turn to do shit. <laughs> uh, it's 11:30. Um, we've played four turns. I know. We are careful. Okay. No, but this is action packed, guys. It's it is, it is. We're moving fast, baby. Um, okay. <clears throat> A double door is tempting. It's tempting, but I want to see where the end of the southern corridor goes. So I'm going to turn south with the intent of returning and looking at the doors on my way back. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Ted, the entire length of that north-south corridor, okay, is one, two, three, four, five, six, is 70 feet. Okay. Um, it, oh. At the end of 70 oh, feet. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. The, the entire north-south corridor, the entire length of the north-south corridor is 70 feet total. So you're going to draw another Where he is feet. now, the one that's turning south. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 70 feet. Um, and at 70 feet, it actually juts to the right. Again, it, it goes to the east. So I need to add 30 more feet. Add 30 more feet. And then at the end of there, it actually turns a uh, right angle to the east and goes down uh, and then goes to the east. 
for another 20 feet before hitting a, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna keep moving yeah uh, before hitting a wall and then there is a door uh at the end of that 20 feet on the southern wall singular door oh, the corridor so, ends there the corridor ends right there but there's a door on the southern wall you're nailing it ted really very well done and don't forget too, ted that the that the door in the northwest there is a double door i gotta fix that but yeah um, just, just i had to go hunting for my my double door icon so i just did that sure thing okay okay i am going to oof I'm going to open that door right in front of me. Right in front of you? Right here? Okay. Yeah. Right um, in front of me. Just count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Really? One moment, please. Okay. <laughs> he's you, looking uh, up the stats. He's looking yeah. up the stats for the monster, David. <laughs> Let me scroll up the map here, Ted's map here. Okay. Uh, just remember, I'm invisible. I'm invisible. <laughs> yeah. You're invisible uh, for not much longer, but yes, um, you uh, you open up the door. Uh, the the there is a ten foot wide and ten foot long corridor. So there's like one square basically um, before it opens out into an oblong rectangular chamber. Um, that it is. Uh, let's see, it is uh, fifty feet east to west, twenty feet north to south, and on where you are entering in. From the northern wall, twenty feet in. Um, sorry, I'm having some little mechanical problems here with the tendency of the smart line to grab onto things. You're doing great, Ted. Yeah, you're doing great. Okay, what you said. okay so we're uh, twenty. Sorry, so repeat the 50, room again for me, John. 50, 50 feet east to west, twenty feet north to south. Um, on we is entering in. Uh, uh, at the twenty, at twenty feet in from the, um, the eastern side on the northern wall. So, uh, but you it's need fifty to... feet wide, so it's the center, right? Uh, no, it's um, uh, I guess ten feet in. Oh, I see. At the yeah, the twenty foot square is what I was gonna. On the yeah. so, 20, wait, 20 so feet. I should have thirty more feet on the west and ten feet on the east. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Now there is a um, uh, before you draw the entire rectangle, there is a passageway leading south. Out of the southwestern corner of the room, right on the south on the south wall. Um, in addition, there is a door on the eastern wall, on the northern portion of it. Okay, uh, I'll let Ted deal with that in the meantime. Um, in the right, room, right here. Uh, yep, you got it. Um, there are. First of all, the first thing you notice on where is that you notice that there are seven corpses of ancient legionnaires and they lie east of a barricade that has been made crudely of barrels, spears, and links of ancient chain that basically bisects the room in the western portion of it. Uh, so there is basically like a, a, a jagged line that basically bisects the room north to south near like that exit to the to the south yeah okay and there are seven corpses that are kind of tightly bunched <laughs> on the eastern side of that barricade so like right like you know where where you are on where um you can easily see them uh and you can see that in addition to those seven corpses there are actually four more equally decrepit corpses that are actually draped across the top of the barricade like slumped the top of them um, the south wall has a peeling fresco of Arden the Defender striding amongst legionnaires, like in a commanding way. And you can see that there is a number of um, ancient coins that are sort of scattered around the corpses that probably fell out of their pouches and stuff. A quick glance. The legionnaires similarly look like rank and file. Yes. They look and very the corpses on the chain look like what? The same, the same thing. Oh wait, they died getting over it, dude. They died. So there's like eleven. There's like eleven me. total corpses, but four of them are actually like slumped across the barricade. But are they facing each other? Like the so four facing yeah. the other seven? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, 
That's, so these so guys were trying fighting. to break through. They were trying to break through. How many bunks were in that bunk bunk room? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get you. Sorry, Mike. I'll get to you in one second. I'm wrong. It's the exact opposite. It looks like the. Here's the interesting thing. The corpses all look the same as the ones that you found in the other room on Weir. Okay, um, even the uh, the the ones on top of the barricade, uh, they 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 all look the same but it doesn't look like they were fighting as a unit, right? It looks like there was the ones that are on top of the barricade and there was the ones that are to the east of the barricade. And even though they were all dressed the same, yeah. they appear to have been fighting each other or something like yeah, that. Right. Right. So they were probably facing each other then. Yeah. It was a yeah. civil war, right? It was a yeah. civil war. Yeah. That, that split the thing. How many bunks were in that room, John? You said a certain number of triple bunks. Right. In eight, 24 eight, eight triple bunks so it could sleep 24 so 24, yeah, 24 so you got eight bodies up in that room and then down here we have another 11 11 so that's 11 which means that these guys might have successfully broken through the barricade and then kept going you think they got through well I, i'm assuming that a lot of people were defending the Ar relics of arden and that someone else got in and killed them to face the Pentarch's room and left. Although that doesn't really explain why they didn't loot Arden's stuff. Precisely. Yeah. I think the, Matt, guys that tried to loot Arden, the guys who tried to loot Arden's stuff are dead in that room. Or they defended well, maybe. Be. Yeah. Also, just the point I was going to make while I was silent, there are a lot of rooms between where we are now and where we've gone. They yeah. could each have a few corpses. We don't know. Yeah. Right. Um, John... <sighs> This is a real Varger question. Um, <laughs> I'm in this room. I'm going to get as silent as I can. Do I hear anything? One, like a draft of air. Is there like a, a different, like, does it, do I, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to ask anyway. Does the temperature feel any different? Does the humidity feel any different? What I'm getting at is if I were closer to an exit point from this really dusty, untouched place mm -hmm. and there was any sort of more natural, environment in that direction towards an exit there might be more humidity there might be more moisture there might be air obviously is an easy one but i'm okay, just trying I'm, to like here yeah yeah uh, you want to spend a turn yes i do what i will say just to clarify <laughs> the cloak has three turns per use mm -hmm. we are in the fourth of six we we're planning to use yeah you're if which you means, spend it which means if you it would last turn. the entirety of that six, yeah. Yeah. So you want to take a turn? I don't think we need to worry too much about being invisible, David. I don't think so, but I'm just, you know, I, it, it, right. I'm, run, I'm running full speed points. in various chambers. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, you take a turn and you're like, you just very carefully listen and feel out the environment. And because you took that turn, I'm going to say that you have the faintest hint, the faintest hint of slightly more humidity coming from across the barrier to the south. And I mean, it's like just at the very reach of your human senses. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, for you know, sure. you, you really have to think about it, you know. Okay. David, if you investigate that barrier, can you tell if it looks like people got through it either way? Like shit just kicked over on the floor, like some of the some of the barricade will... material, like on the floor, on one direction or the other. I yeah, happily, more. I'll happily spend a turn investigating the room if everyone's cool with me spending another turn doing so. Yeah, do that. We we got stuff to look at. Cool. One question to ask: Can you tell? I mean, it, there may not be directional. Can you tell from which side it was built? Like, is I'm are spikes side, pointing one way, yeah. or are spikes pointing the other way? Are they being kept in? <laughs> I mean, maybe who knows? Right. <laughs> Actually, which, yeah, no, which way's in? <laughs> maybe we're out there in. Yeah. No. Exactly. So, John, I am going to spend a turn searching the room. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Give me a second here. Yeah. Yeah, can detecting the humidity and searching the room be the same turn? I would love that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but that, that, it that, sounds like fun. I'm really... Okay, awesome. cool. Nice. <laughs> um, so, can... the you can tell that the barricade has been broken through. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hastily assembled in the first place. Um, it is difficult to tell which end of it was like you know where where defense was being was taking place right like you're not really sure yeah uh, it's it, tough to tell um 
in the meantime, though, you do see that you have found um, 57 ancient silver pennies and 19 gold solidi. Uh, so that is, you know, 190 plus 57 gold worth of valuables. But don't forget that all of those um, are 10 times more heavy than normal coins. If you want, yeah, to you haven't been picking any of this stuff up yet, right? Uh, I I was picking up the pennies, but I can I cannot pick up the pennies. You heard me? I mean, <laughs> up to you. I was just curious. I didn't know if you were. I mean, my my total count from the first and the second would be uh, sixty seven pennies and twenty four solidi. So it was nineteen solidi here, nineteen here, and five prior. So that'd be twenty four solidi total, and sixty seven pennies total. That's what I've picked up. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's 247 gold pieces value. Cool. But don't forget the weight is 10 times more. <laughs> oh, the weight is 10 times more. Yeah. So I'm going to leave them. I'm sorry. Like, I thought, I thought the it was just weight the weight is like picking up 247 gold, basically, right? Uh, I see. Here in this room? Well, totally. Yeah. Yeah. If, if 19 solid die weighs 10 times as much, that's the equivalent of picking up 190 gold, which is what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not going to pick it up, just to be clear. I, okay. I don't want the extra weight. Sorry, sorry. I'm so same with, the, same with the prior pennies and solidi. I'm leaving them. I, I, I thought it was just the value was 10 you times. You behind? I picked Ooh. them up, but I'm going to drop them now because they're so heavy. They're all in this small room. Okay. Got it. Okay. They're so all in the, the rest of the group. What do you guys do? Uh, why don't we Girl, check, out that room? check out the room to the south? Yeah. yeah. Let's see the room to the south. Okay, so you already listened at the door. You didn't uh, hear anything. Opening it up, you can see that there is a five-foot, you know, extension um, before it opens up into a mirrored version of the room to the north, right? So the same dimensions, a square room, right? Okay. But just just yep. mirror it, but just mirror it, Ted. All right. Um, there is here. Um, it looks like it's it's completely intact and suffered no damage at all during whatever happened here. Um, it's 10 foot tall. There are frescoes here that show legionnaires fighting, drinking, marching, and relaxing here. There are 10 simple wooden stools that are sort of scattered about at random. Um, and there are four four foot diameter wooden round tables. Okay. There is a bar in the southwestern corner um, that still holds... <laughs> Wooden cups and a few bottles of what appears to be liquor, old and draped with cobwebs and dust. Um, well, there are, just goes right over there. Hell yeah! There <laughs> are, Drink it. In addition, there are three dartboards mounted on the west wall. So, so this is their rec room. These soldiers left, and they left booze. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will let you. I will let you know in just a moment. He knows that very well. He's going to check each and every one. Something's uh, fishy here. Uh, Ted, this is uh, a, also, mir a mirror of the northern room, Ted. Right? It's a square room. Oh, oh it's John. not. Uh, right. At the it's other end of the corner. Eric's room. Yeah. John, just, just to be fair, uh, Lisbeth would probably need to mark off like three turns on her lantern because she's still back there holding that door open. Yeah. And we wouldn't John, have left her in the dark. Right. When you say true. mirror, though, does the indentation go to the right or the left? Uh, the indentation uh, to the to the left. To the left, Ted. Sorry. So not an exact so mirror. Just, I know. Ted's, more just, like I know I know, yeah. Ted's swearing at me. I know. I've, I've been reading that. I've been reading the uh, the adventure instead of paying attention to Ted's jacked mapping. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what do you do? How's how's the booze, John? Uh, so it actually looks like it would be quite valuable because it is really fucking old. Um, it is, drink it? it is, it is brandy, um, ancient Arcant Arcantian brandy. And I would say Avaricios, as you are skilled in the ways of, of vintners, um, and come from a long line of such. Um, and of course your worship of Lysion, that you would immediately be able to peg this, um, as each of the three remaining viable bottles of brandy would be worth 85 gold each. Which is not any insignificant amount of money for lit for brandy. Um, Each yeah, one of those takes, gonna, up, takes up a slot. Three. Yeah, three. 
not not to mention you get the bragging rights of saying i just drank from like a brandy bottle that was like a thousand years old mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah he'll take one and uh you will take the others okay okay you can also use those to flambe the ice princess so that oh, that, up, never, that would be a waste. That took yeah. up one of two of Onwir's last two turns, so you guys have another turn to do something if you want. Uh, I want to search the bar, John, like for anything like underneath it or built into the wood or, um, you know, like secret compartments that hold like, you know, plus five Holy Avengers or anything like that. Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, spending a turn searching, you do not see anything... Um, uh, there, there's there's nothing secret to find. Okay. So interesting Anything, enough, uh, like, like everything seems like what you guys have explored so far, except for the room that you entered into, appears to be relatively mundane, right? Really? Um, there's obviously a mystery to uncover here, but um, there's not like like there's a difference obviously between here like these very mundane like military quarters versus what you've been experiencing in like the thoth precincts which is just like secrets and crazy shit like all over the place you know what i mean it's a a different way of life here apparently right yeah well what's interesting about this layout is if you come like if someone's coming from the south they would come up this set of stairs into this big statue filled room and then there's this set of barracks and everything off to the right this is like like the elite guard or something like that. Pentark, Pentark's uh, personal bodyguards or something, you know, the guardians of the relics, that kind of deal. Yeah. I think um, the Canadian, uh, never mind. I won't make that joke. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you haven't the, the found store rooms for like food, you know? I mean, you know, for a fact that the Pentark got a message directly from the Archon, from the yeah. Archon of Ardenpool, telling me you defend <laughs> these relics with your life. Yeah. And he, he didn't, apparently. Very strange. Um, so at this point, we've looked at the rooms up here. We've got one more turn before Onward starts coming back. Or <clears throat> we've caught up with him. <clears throat> Should we go um, into the statue room? I think we, uh, yeah, I think we should. Start like, I, I, I mean, I know Avarisus was struck kind of wondering where that little guy went, you know? It's a little sneaky sometimes. Okay, so the rest of the party moves back into the statue room. We won't have to explain it again, but of course you are awestruck by what you find. Um, yeah. And you do not... Uh, and Onweer was very careful in this room, so except for like the footprints, which he probably tracked through here, and you could probably right. trace him with, you don't see any evidence of Onweer at all. Um, you don't hear him either because he's being very, very quiet. Um, More would like to loot the remaining seven bodies. Are you going yeah. in there? Yeah. Yeah, let's go in. Okay. So I guess if the statues are protecting the relics. They'll come alive if you touch the relics. All right. So uh then you... why are there not any dead guys in that room? Because I don't think that's how they died. I think they died de- defending. Fighting. Yeah. Yeah. David, yeah. how many how many how many silver pennies did you take from those guys from he took ten silver pennies and five solidi from the closest from, body, from the closest okay, so body, yeah. the one more, that he hooked and brought. Yeah, more yeah. from the rest of the bodies. Yeah, you find sixty-three silver pennies. Okay, and you find um, twenty-six ancient gold solidi. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh. Looting the bodies as well. You also find two simple gold rings. Each of them is worth fifteen gold. Um, and you find uh, one of them is actually carrying a, uh, well, it, it's not carrying, but, uh, it, it was, you know, how like everything was sort of smashed here. Um, one yeah. thing that, uh, so all of the weapons and, uh, here have been smashed, like gone, but there is one that appears to strangely enough has, have, has escaped that fate. And that is a beautiful curved dagger. Mm. Okay. So silver pennies, the ancient silver pennies are worth one gold each, right? Mm-hmm. And solar die are worth 10 each. So that is a total value of what? Uh, 323 gold? Sounds about right. All right. I think... Um... Yeah, Matt? Um, so while Mort is uh, checking out these bodies, uh, Avaricious would like to check out the two statues, look very closely... 
for things like joints and, you know, indication. We've seen moving statues before. We know he knows where to look for like the joints that would make the thing walk and, and come alive. What mm -hmm. I was going to say to you is look at their weapons and see if they're like blood stained. Um, sure. Okay. I mean, you're there too if you want to look. You, you, you can't see any um, joints. Like seems like you have like with like the Thoth statues of like moving them in mm -hmm. positions and stuff like that. There's none of that. They are very lifelike. They, they're really well cut. Um, Gorand, uh, they, uh, when you look really close, you can actually tell that yes, there is blood on like dried blood on the weapons. Okay. Good call. Yeah, these things definitely came alive and killed these guys. Probably because they were going to loot the room. Maybe they kill you when you cross the threshold. Like maybe they, I don't, I don't know, but it's like, I mean, nobody actually made it in there to get an artifact. On weird did. Right. He didn't, but he, he was, was invisible. invisible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also so very pretty. Mm -hmm. that's, or, that's just a... <laughs> or, were these guys that managed to fight their way to the barricade, kill the defenders. And then when they came into this room, the statues activated because they were outsiders. Is there some, some, I wonder if David searches that room down there, do all the legionaries down there have like something on them that might give them passage or something like that. I don't know. It's throwing shit out there. Okay. So you guys have um, basically cleaned up the corpses in that area and are debating yeah. what to do. Um, and then uh, let's switch back to Onweir. You have the barricade in front of you with more corpses. What do you do? Oh, this is a toughie. Um, I would say like you could probably hear the faint echoes of them looting the bodies coming down that corridor. Probably. I mean, very, very yeah. faint, but yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, move through the area of the barricade that's broken. And look south. Oh, okay. So you're going to cross over the barricade. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. To be clear, to be clear, if it's apparent, I can do so without shredding myself like a soldier well, in the too trenches. Late now. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you can. Yeah, John, how, how high pitched are the screams that we hear? I just, uh, you can carefully, you can carefully climb over the barricade. It's a little unnerving because you have to kind of move bodies around and stuff like that to kind of slump sure. off. Um, but yes, you uh, you <coughs> climb over the barricade, and you can see that the corridor goes down for 20 feet before it descends a staircase for another 20 feet before leveling out. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's it's just down forever. Plus, 20, plus another 20. We're like 400 feet down from, uh, from who knows where. From who I, knows where. I, this, is, this is a crazy thing to say because it's based on nothing, bearing, bearing this in mind. Um, I kept scratching my head at the notion that we would be descending deeper into Arden Vool in the orientation of this thing. Is it possible, like the Gladiator School, we are at a location that is not inside Arden Vool? Are we at like we could we could have oh, teleported Alice. anywhere, man? I guess we would anywhere. have heard of that though, wouldn't we have? Yeah, I know that's the thing. We, we could yeah, have, we could be yeah. in another plane for all I know. Yeah, you have no idea. I think what's more likely is that we are. Well, we I think we established that the total height of that cliff was what seventeen hundred feet or something crazy. Yes. So if if you know we are aware of about seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred feet worth of depth, we could be anywhere in there. But I think we are lower, but we still have a thousand feet of room. So there's yeah. no we're not running out of space. And sure. these staircases well, John, are all within the same level here. You understand that, right? Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, guys, I was recently re-listening to episode two. And <laughs> when we were do. on the Arden Vader, we crossed some room. There was like a thing in the cliff face with the baboons like shaking their fists at the wyverns or something like that, remember? And that mm -hmm. was like two-thirds of the way up, I, if I remember correctly. That's about right. And so per that, actually, whew, I'm going to press a little bit further. The reason I asked for humidity, but I didn't think about this, there's a giant fucking waterfall, guys, and that makes an enormous amount of sound. That's so what if I'm I am in, I'm, I'm in any proximity of it, I would start to hear it a ways away, right? So yeah. I'm going to, John, really be considering 
that <laughs> yeah, as I, I continue. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> You're basically yeah. reminding me to look at this. <laughs> no, no. 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 When he no. said humidity, I was really hoping it was the waterfall. That's what I was. Right. Going, that's what I was hoping for. I, but I, I just, mean, I didn't. I'm talking about like it's only because David had the presence of mind to spend a turn and very clearly state yeah. what he was sensing, yeah. and it was at the far reach of human ability to detect. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah, no, slightly more humidity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go down the stairs. So. <laughs> okay. So going down the stairs, you can see that it levels out after Ted's drawing yeah. there, and it continues on for another 20 feet um, before it meets a T intersection that heads directly east and west. Wow. Is it, okay. uh, it's, oh, you just said it's a T. It's a T. Yeah. It heads <laughs> east and west. Um, the, uh, uh, do you go, you keep going down? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go look. Okay. So peeking yes. around the corner, um, you see some interesting things. So it goes east and west. There is a staircase that goes up to the south, directly to the west of where you kind of debouche from into that T intersection there. Wait. So but down here, so directly to the west, so yeah. 10, feet to, 10, 10 feet to the west to the south, there is a corridor that, go, that basically goes upwards, like up a staircase. Okay, okay, so right there, correct, yeah, and it goes up. Um, the other one's gonna go down. Come on, now, baby. you can tell on where that after about 15 feet or so up that staircase, the uh, it is completely choked with some sort of cave-in or blockage of stone. Okay? So that it's basically impassable as far as you can tell. To the east, however, is something a little bit more interesting. To the east, uh, it goes on for... T it goes for 10 feet before there is an open door. Ooh. Um... The door itself has been broken down and it's hanging in tatters on its hinges, similar to the way that the door was in the Pentarch's chamber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blown so, in, blown in, into yeah. the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it opens up into a strange trapezoidal room. And I'm going to give you the description of this room and we probably have to end it there because it's going to be a little bit detailed. All right. Ted, are you ready to? Just a second. The door was blown in? Blown in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Michael, oh, would you, you please move oh, your green that's... arrow? I won't. <laughs> you can't make me bitch. <laughs> okay. So before you do before you do that, John, uh, yeah. I know this is just this is my inability to let go of things. That fucking golden rod, we don't know what it did, that I found behind the statue of Arden at the session one or two of the thing. I just I want to repeat forever in our minds if we ever see something that seems like that much, it's just such a strange object in such a specific place. I just want to like call it out again. You know we got that me. back, right? I know we yeah, have yeah, it. It's, it's on Yoast. It's on Yoast. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Ted, you ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm having some problems. <laughs> okay. This is a trapezoidal room. First of all, all right. So basically look at it as triangular, but um, it's, it's definitely a trapezoid. So I'm going to try to be as thorough as I can. Um, it is okay. uh, 30 feet east to west. It is 50 feet north to south. Okay. okay. However, Onweir is entering in at the narrowest part of the trapezoid. So at the, um, at, uh, e e uh, so he's entering in like directly, how do I put it? Okay, do it uh, this way, John. Starting with the if I'm standing in the doorway, yeah, at that that yeah. northeastern point, yeah. do I go up like ten feet there or something? Or so it's gonna go. It's gonna so it goes at forty five degree angles at either side of Onweir, right? Like the the room explodes out and open at, at diagonals going uh, northeast and northwest, um, and it goes for twenty feet. Okay. Right. Those, okay. North. Goes it's northeast and north. Facing I'm sorry, it goes northeast and, and southeast, right? Ah, okay. Now I have got you. Yeah. 20 feet, though. Yeah. 20, 20 feet at a 45 degree angle. Okay. 20 feet at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Then it basically um, <laughs> uh, uh, it, it goes east for 10 feet directly east on either on either side. Right? 
there you go. And then just connect, and then just connect that eastern wall. Okay. Okay. All right. Well done. Sorry about that. That's just a, this is a weird one. Um, it was great. Okay. It's perfect. So Killed there it. are long stone benches that parallel each of the diagonal walls. All right. Uh, there is a 10 foot diameter pool in the center of the room full of clear liquid. Can't really tell what it is. To the east of the pool is an obvious shrine to Arden. The east wall is taken up with two 15 foot tall frescoes of Arden surrounding an inscription in Mithric. Uh, the left image shows her as a Spitharios, which is also the which is the term for a simple legionnaire. So all of the corpses that you have found are, except for the one in the bed, probably, um, are Spitharii. Um, uh, oh, that makes sense because they wield Spada, right? The the swords. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, there you go. Uh, while the right shows her in a toga of a decurion, which is like a high ranking leader like, of pen, like a yeah. corporal or something. Um, the inscription in Mithric, which you can read on, right, says this is on the eastern wall between the two depictions of her. Those who would take up the labors of the great defender must purify themselves. Um, the shrine itself is a piece of red granite that's eight feet tall, and it has 11 niches carved into the side that's facing west. Uh, within the niches are two 18-inch tall ivory statuettes of Arden as a spearwoman. They look to be valuable. Um, a cracked leather packet. Can't really tell what's what that's about. A decrepit Somebody's leather... This a decrepit leather thong that appears to have been strung through 17 ancient copper bits and a small vial. Like like, like a thong? Like... No, like a, like, like a leather Mike. thong. Mike! Like, like you'd wear around your neck. Yeah. Arden no. was not that kind of girl. Like. <laughs> How like... dare you? Cool. Um... Okay, so to be clear, like the, the, these are frescoes depicting Arden twice in different dress, right? Um, those are frescoes, right. but then there's an actual red granite, eight foot tall shrine that's on the eastern wall, right? Um, and the, and like the Mithric has sort of been written on the wall between the two figures of Arden, uh, two depictions of Arden. But then in these little niches are all these like weird little things. So something like on the wall like that, kind of. Well, it's not a statue, right? Right, it's a shrine. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, but it's more like rectangular, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, it's rectangular. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget that fine. there is, you know, very important. There's a ten foot diameter pool directly in the center of the room with some sort of clear liquid. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think I need to have a new. Oops. I need a new icon for that. Okay, so I need a pool. On where takes a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take a drink out of there. Of course you do. Before I do, I say, uh, I, Anwir, honor you, Arden, and promise to defend your greatness from the barbarians. Uh, and then I take a drink. Okay. Um, you should know, too, before you actually, so you can speak the words. When you look over and you're about to kind of cup some water uh, or whatever it is in that pool, you can see that there is underneath the water, it's very clear, there, the the ten foot diameter pool actually seems to be lined with like a stone bench. Around oh, it's it. for sitting in, David. Around it's a hot tub. It's a hot tub. It's a hot tub. Yeah, that's what the oh, fog is for, bro. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> I, I, so so we have uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> Onwe removes his clothes. <laughs> oh shit! And gets in. Of course the hot he does. Tub. <laughs> <laughs> and he right. puts on the thong. You remove your clothes? I say what I said, and then I'm going to bathe myself in the pool. Okay. When you tr strip off your clothes and you step into the pool, that is the moment, the moment your foot touches the water, that you suddenly become visible again. Yeah. Um, it is Was now... it taking the cloak off that made him visible? Uh, actually, that's a good that's a good point. Actually, actually, taking off the cloak would definitely make him visible. But no, it was the, the expiration that actually happened. Um, it is now exactly nine p.m. 
uh, well done. You've done an hour's worth of adventuring for this session. Um, <laughs> and you have, uh, you have, uh, you sit yourself down into the water. The water is cool, refreshing. Doesn't appear to be have any ill effects. Um, and you say that, 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 uh, prayer as well. Um, let's see. You feel very, you don't, you, nothing happens to you, but you feel pretty good. Like no, there's no ill effects at all. All right. That's all. That's all I can tell you really. Um, but, uh, yeah. uh one last question before yeah. we wrap. Sorry. Go ahead. John. I'm done. There's no, I mean, I'm I, not that I saw, but just to be sure there's no evidence of traffic and like other doors in this room that I see. This is a dead end. There as appears far to be a dead end. Yeah. Now it's been blown in. That's the thing. It was right. blown in from, from the, from the pool side. It was blown in. Yes. No. No, no, yeah, no. So there's no, a door. No. There's a... From where you came, from the corridor. From the hallway oh, into the. I thought room. the opposite. So I was like, oh, there's some no. secret door in here. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. But there are a lot right. of like interesting items in the niches in the shrine sure. that have not been disturbed. Yeah. Right. And there's nothing that appear to be. And there's no corpses at all either. Right. So everything seems to be pretty chill here. Although the, the, what is going on here is a little bit weird. Right. It seems like whoever, if this was a civil war, guys, speculation, we can do this in the detox as well. But just quick thought. Is it possible that they still held these items sacred and did not defile them yeah. because they had the same belief system? They weren't there to fucking loot. They were there yeah. to kill what they thought were apostates. Like right. they see these the defenders well, yeah. as the, the as sullying this space, I think is what's going on. But you're also equating like their differences as being religious, but they could they're oh, just no, I, don't, I say apostasy. I, I just oh, mean, okay. you know, I just mean that they they uh yeah, they hate each other. It's, it's yeah. not. We, we we kept speculating about why there wasn't any looting going on, and I think this is a, another reminder that I don't think looting was the objective. Is all I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Do we? You you want to leave it great. there? Do it was only to, an um, hour, but that was awesome. You what know? we can do is if you're willing to like uh, just spend like one more turn. Eh, it might be a couple turns. Do you want to like would, start? Do you want to meet up with Onware or does Onware want to retreat back up? We can just decide that right now if you want. Please let us come upon Onware naked and floating in a hot tub. <laughs> yes. That's it has to be again. It has Absolutely. to be again. But I'm like chilling. I'm kind of dozing too. Like I've 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 lost myself in this moment of relaxation. And it's the only time Onware is not sort of like on guard. And I've kind of forgotten myself, I think, when you guys walk in. I'm sort of <laughs> relaxed. Like, yeah. Now there is yeah. a bunch of like doors that like Onware did not hit on the way to here so yeah, of course if yeah. you want to just keep with the split party sort of thing and if you guys want to explore those doors we can just do that next time um but if you want to just fast forward and have you guys meet up at you know in the hot tub room that's up to you i leave that up to these guys i'm gonna stay where i'm at you have footprints in the dust to exactly where i am that's so true. i leave that up to you guys I, I'm just, gonna, I don't think i'm gonna return yeah. Let's, yeah let's just leave it where it is and we'll decide next time that's fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay. that sounds good Sounds good. All right. Awesome session. I know we didn't move too far forward in time, but you guys um actually um I think you guys might have actually hit the hit the magic Rooms? number. I think yes. we did. Yeah. <laughs> two, Plus one, two. Two, five. yeah. Plus two. Yeah. So you did a lot of exploring, which is great. You guys barreled through it, so you didn't waste any time, which is great. Cool. All right, we'll leave it there. And uh, we will see everyone next time. You've been watching 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and pass along the word. And we hope everyone has a great week. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody. See you. Thank you, John. Thanks, John.